professionals. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Unless they're professionals, that for some reason, having the microphone within like, you know, five inches of their face, they're just like, I'm uncomfortable. So you have to be very careful about that with them. So yeah. it's like, all right, I'll just raise the sensitivity. Yeah, you you got to take into account that women use like five different washcloths when they wash themselves. We use like one or two. You know, I, I think yeah. most men use one and then most of the, the, most of the fruity men probably use two. And the, yeah, I, I, I consider myself to be pretty yeah. fruity because I have two different types of uh, body yeah. wash. <laughs> and you got the, the free the free wash and then the actual wash. Yeah, I've, I've got the um, because my my beard dries up really easy when it's cold because of the hum the humidity yeah. super low. So I have one that's like got like argan oil and stuff for my beard, and then I have another one that I just use for everything argan? else. Argan? My butthole. Argan oil. Never heard of that. Man. Yeah, it's because you're black, <laughs> and we typically don't need yeah. that shit. <laughs> that's a, that's definitely a white boy. Well, thing. I've been recording you for the last five minutes, so. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I can live with ready that. Ready to go? Right, I'm cool, always cool, ready man. to go. So we man. jump right into this. Hey guys out there, it's going to be Donnie coming to you with my guy David again. This is going to be normal. It's not. It's not. Uh, like I told you guys, I had a, a, guy, a guest set up, and uh, there was a time difference. I guess daylight savings happened recently. I'm not sure. Uh, J Japan doesn't do that. So uh, yeah. he was off by an hour, and I got here, and he was already like two thirty his time. So anyway, I hit up David, and of course David responded like always with a Straight up, yes or no. That's all you got to do in the world. Yes or no. So That's anyway, it. getting right to it, man. Like I said, how, how's everything going over there currently right now? Status update and all that crap over there. Um, well, I do, I do want to jump in and say daylight savings time was March yeah. 8th. So he had yeah, a little well, while yes, to adjust. Yeah. But uh... <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, all, it's, all, it's, but, um, it's all good out there, man. We'll link up, man. So I don't want to talk. I, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, here to talk <laughs> shit about people. Um... <laughs> He's like, actually, actually, that particular just, like, guy is transitioning out of the uh, military. And he is actually, uh, I'll let, we, when we talk, we'll let him announce the job. He's looking at a cool job opportunity with a actual no, uh, notable uh, company out there who's uh, vet vet uh, run, so I don't want to put that out there until it's you know confirmed that he's gonna get that job. Nice. But yeah, man, it's a pretty pretty cool vet run operation. They made some some uh, videos. I think there were B market videos and uh, movies, and uh, they run a company or stuff like that. And you know, yeah, people know about them. But anyway, yeah, that's yeah. Really so cool. once he, uh, I think he's got the job. So that's what the announcement was going to be, and it was going to be pretty cool. So again, tying all the networks together and, and and talking to him. So I'm pretty happy for that guy. But anyway, nice. man, yeah, man, it's um, uh, over here again. Do you want to get right into the stats, or you just want to, you know, talk about the the what's going on, man? Well, I can always talk about yeah. whatever, man. You know me; I can rant. I'm a I'm a master bullshit artist. I can talk about whatever for however long you need me to. Um, what's cr the crazy thing right now is that so you you asked how things are going right now. Things are a little crazy in the old United States yeah. of America. Um, COVID has really changed. A lot of things. Uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a software engineer, a cloud engineer, more specifically. So I tend to work from home anyway. Um, however, now everyone who can work from home is working from home, and a lot. So if you have a job that you can work remotely at all, um, even if your job has to give you like one of those desk phones that plugs into your network, um, a lot of them are doing that right now, and. Um, What's crazy about that is it's kind of debilitating towards our economy because most of the jobs that make money for America aren't the types of jobs where you right. can work from home. Uh, restaurant owners, um, you know, laundromat runners, um, construction workers, and a lot of them. So people are having to determine whether or not they're essential. And it's causing a lot of delays, a lot of hangups, a lot of missed money. And um, it's causing a lot of. I would I would use the word panic. I'm not the type to panic, but I'm, I would say there are definitely a lot of people who are panicking. You see that a lot with our stores. Things are clearing off the shelf as soon as they can stock them, and it's been three weeks since they've announced this whole Corona thing, and there's still people are still running out to the stores as soon as something is in stock to go buy it. Um, I, you know me, I'm a Second Amendment guy. I love guns. I have freaking ten right. of them, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> like I just looked around my office. I've got like like, like, like extra real guns. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of course, of course. I've uh, on, on my purse right now is my, my latest guy, purchase. <laughs> this is my baby. Um, this I, I just bought this. This is the Smith and Wesson M and P uh, two point wow. This thing is freaking epic. Love this thing. Hey, hey, go to, um, go to, go to, I've got hey, my go shotgun. Go to clean up your breasts, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
you know what they say in the Marine Corps, gear adrift yeah. is a gift. So I don't want any Air Force guys walking in here and stealing yeah. my brass. Uh, <laughs> so they've got that. I've got um, I got I got some boom sticks, a couple pew pews, uh, some long, some reach out and touch them, 300 wind mag. I know you Jap- Japanese guys don't know what a 300 wind mag mm-hmm. is. That's about the size of a typical Japanese man's yeah. penis. And um, and uh, that reaches out pretty damn far. Um, but yeah, so that's another thing that's happening right now. And I'm I'm super okay with everyone running out to buy guns and ammo right now. But um, the anti-gunners really aren't doing it. But what's funny is all the people that used to say things like, "Oh, you don't need a, a, a rifle with thirty that, that holds thirty rounds," are now running out to buy rifles that hold thirty yeah. rounds because they're afraid. Some of, half of them are afraid that something really bad is going to happen. The other half are afraid that they're going to get mm-hmm. banned super quickly or that the movement of them is going to get stopped. So it's really yeah. crazy times right now. Uh, more importantly and more realistically, what's, what's really affecting us right now is um, states uh, nationwide are going into lockdown. I live in Indiana, and Indiana is currently in a lockdown right now. Um, so basically anything non-essential isn't running. So that means, you know how I love my whiskey. Um, I can't just run out and buy a bottle of whiskey unless I go to the grocery store. And the grocery stores don't always, sh- you know, shelve the right. greatest whiskey. Um, so it, it, the, all the alcohol stores, are clo- a lot of the alcohol stores are closed uh, unless they're super privately owned and they can kind of run under the radar from the government. Um, speak speak if you're <laughs> yes exactly because uh, <laughs> because we really are bringing back the roaring yeah, 20s with yeah, our funny, prohibition funny that right you mentioned that because i um <laughs> i had to actually look it up because a lot of people will like they'll correlate the great depression with like 1920 and people say it happened in the 20s but it was actually like you know 20, yeah. 19, 29 to like 1934 29. and uh but it's it's yep. weird man this is 1929 that's nine years it's 2020 that's almost it, it, it almost is happening again it's yeah, almost, almost 100, 100 years, years, man. Exactly, almost 100 right. full years. So it's, man. Like, it's like, <laughs> man, is this pre programmed or, you know, and then what's happening? The biggest thing right now, man, if all this is happening due to politics, because it is alarmingly ironic that this is happening all at the same time as elections about to, you know, about to come up. And I'm not, I'm not, mm-hmm. I mean, I listened to your last podcast. You guys definitely know a lot more about politics than me, but can you, like, elaborate on that? Or your thoughts on the, um, the, uh, uh, from a conspiracy theory yeah. standpoint, because I could definitely yeah. talk about right. that. That's right. really fun. Um, there are a lot of conspiracy theorists that do believe that um, a lot of this stuff is too well yeah. timed to be coincidence. Um, me personally, I think it's just coincidence. Some person in China bit the head off of a bat and um, they went home and kissed their wife. Their wife went and kissed their kids. Their kids went to school. The virus no, no, no. spread. She, she, she cheated on um, It's pretty much just clear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. She was, you know, freaking eating some other dude's egg roll. So <laughs> this is just the most racist conversation yeah, we've had so far. Uh, I just want to throw that out there. But uh, no, so that's how a lot of the, uh, So that is conspiracies aside. I, it's purely coincidence that it so happens to have happened on a coming election year. What does that mean for our president, Donald Trump? I have no idea. I am not a Trump supporter. I'm not a Trump hater, but which pisses people off because I'm very centrist. I don't hate Donald Trump, but I don't love him either. So I'm not like, you know, oh, daddy Trump, but I'm also like, I'm not like, get the orange man out of office. Sometimes he has some really good ideas and I'm like, okay, cool. So most of the time, what he says, I'm like, wow, dude, please yeah. stop talking. You're it, embarrassing it, the entire yeah. country. Because it does being like, you know, of course, like, I, you know, I, 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 I model myself after keeping it, you know, people say keeping it real, keeping it straight up. It's just being straightforward yeah. with your thoughts. And he has so much money that he there's, you know, people who don't have a lot of cash, they got to, you know, they bow down and answer to people. He just do, he, he doesn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it, you know, they're saying like maybe he's not his net worth is not as much as reported, but he still has more. He. He but still has more money than yeah. He still yeah. He still has. He don't. Yeah. He's good. They're like, oh, he doesn't have all those it, billions. It doesn't I'm like, matter. He still it doesn't has. Matter. <laughs> yeah, they're like, it, CNN did a CNN did a bash yeah. report on him back in 2017 where they're like, Donald Trump's actual net worth is closer to 700 million as oh, opposed man, to seven billion. I'm like, amount, man. do you know how much? 
I'm like, do you know how much shit I would talk if yeah. I had seven hundred million dollars in liquid yeah. just laying around? I wouldn't give a yeah. shit, dude, what people thought about me. I would just talk and talk and talk, and yeah. that's what he does. He's like, kick me out of yeah, office. What is, what is oh, well. Because how much does a president make per year? Uh, four hundred thousand. Like he doesn't even, and I think he he pretty much opted out of that. And, and he, yeah, he he and and he collects none of it. He actually um he the so. Congressional law dictates that the president can make no more than four hundred thousand dollars a year from salary, but can also take home no few, no less than mm. one dollar. So he opts for the dollar, and the rest of it gets dis- distributed back into and the government. Ta- and that's tax, honestly, tax, uh, in tax of, for him, right? Wow. It probably, yeah. yeah, it probably is at some point. But at the same time, four hundred thousand dollars going back into the economy not much. Yeah. It's not much. Um, Given what I pay in taxes, it, that would take it would take me about ten years to pay that much. But still, that's one person. Yeah, and <laughs> over, over a decade. And the thing about like for the most of this stuff, man, with the politics, it with people, you know, they, they try to you know that you know people you know and being a, a black person, all you hear about growing up is you know Democrat this, Democrat that. When Obama got when, when yep, Obama yep. got in office and everything, it, it was kind of uh, for me. I was like, I didn't vote for him. It was cool. I didn't vote for anybody, so it's not, it's not nothing against Obama. It's just it was cool to see that people noticed that Obama wasn't your neighborhood watch, your neighborhood, you know, housing community president. He was a president of the state of the United <laughs> States. So all these all these guys in yes. the, in, a, in a hood, they thought their lives were going to change drastically overnight, and they noticed like you know, okay, give it a few months, give it a few years, and like okay, remember it's four years, two terms, it's still the same, right? Like dude, he's not looking up for. Yep. He's looking out for the United States, not Baltimore City, not, you know, not Compton. He's looking out for the entire yeah. United States. And, and uh, Exactly. And Obama did a lot of yeah. great things. I won't lie about that. I was not an Obama supporter either. Man, I'm just a terrible person when it comes to, like, supporting our presidents. I think uh, – I don't think I fully supported a single president no. we've had. Um, however, I will say that – Obama did some really good things. He also did some things that are questionable, but we that's maybe we'll talk right. about that later. But what uh, it, I found it so interesting the amount of people that, as a perfect perfect example, when I was in Georgia, um, Obama was running for for his first term in two thousand eight, and um, I was just doing my rounds, doing some shopping, and. <clears throat> A person doing camp. A person was there. A young lady, a young black lady, was there doing comp- campaigning for Obama votes for Democratic votes, and um, she was she basically gave the whole speech about here's what Obama is bringing to the table. Here's what he proposes. Can we count on your vote for for a president? You know, for uh, Senator at the time Senator Barack yeah. Obama, and I said, well, I don't know why. <laughs> wh- what did you say that would make me want to vote for Barack Obama? And she literally looked. She literally at that point looked me in the eyes and said, "Well, because he's black." Yeah, like that, and I was a, like, "That's not a good that's enough a strong, reason to vote for anyone." Right there. I mean, but you know, that's what they were saying about right. Hillary Clinton. They were like, "With with Hillary Clinton, she should get a large turnout of female right. voters." And I'm like, if women. If women will vote for someone strictly because they're a woman, maybe we should take back their ability to vote. Yeah. And I know a lot of people probably just said, what the actual fuck did this dude just say? I mean, that's that's logical, man. I am serious. Women make... Okay, here's here's something that I'm going to go off on a tangent, so forgive me here. I'm going to go off on a tangent. Um, There's a movie that got released called Bombshell. Bombshell is um, a, a feminist angled movie based on the um, the atrocities that happened within the Fox News Network, the Weinstein Corporation, and more specifically the Fox News Network, where um, male su- superiors were taking advantage of young females to get them to do things so that they can make it up. So, you know, all kinds of sexual misconduct, sexual abuse, things, yada, yada, yada. And I'm not trying to demean that. This, these were terrible acts that should have never happened. These men should be and hopefully are being punished for sexually abusing right. these women. However, the movie performed terribly in the in the box office. It, it made back its money, but it didn't do as well as they were hoping. And 
all of the articles, if you Google bombshell box office, the first 10 links are all about, oh, bombshell bombed at the box office, but it's no surprise with male egos, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so I, I, I did a quick um, I did a quick statistic fact lookup because anyone can do this. I said, um, I said female population percentage United States. According to 2018 statistics, females make up 51% of the population. Females are the majority of the population in the United States. Therefore, if women want a, a female centrist movie to do well, they are in power to do that. Men aren't empowered. Oh, but men have all the power. They have all the money. You make yeah. money. You make more than $20 a year. You can take $20, set it aside, and go see a movie with a bag yeah. of popcorn. <laughs> or you can wait for it to get released on a matinee and go catch it at a 5 a, at a 5 p.m. showing. Or you can wait for it to come out on Blu-ray and buy the Blu-ray. This movie continues to perform poorly and... I've watched the trailers. I've watched a couple of reviews, and you know I'm a huge right, right, right. movie guy. Yeah, I've got movie there. I've got nearly a thousand movies in my collection. I've got a freaking fifteen thousand watt home theater that competes with my local mm -hmm. cinema for yeah, quality. We'll yeah. I'm a movie guy. Yeah, I'm a movie guy, and I. If women want this, this movie is continuing to perform poorly, even on the Blu-ray and digital releases. I, so I'm just saying, if women want this movie to perform well, they have the power to do that. I've said all of this to say that I, I truly believe that if someone is going to vote for someone based solely on their gender or their color of their skin, they should have their right to vote yeah. stripped. If you are a black man and you vote for a president-elect or a, a president in nomination simply because he's a black man... You should probably, if that's your one issue that you're voting on, regardless of all the fuckery, there's a lot of fucked up shit happening in the United States right now. Regardless of all the bad things that are happening in the United States right now, if you pick out someone to vote for simply because they're black, that's a that's a problem. That's part of the problem that's, that, that exists in the United States. So if you're a female and you vote for Hillary Clinton or Elizabeth Warren simply because they're female then you are part of the problem. Please stop voting so yesterday. We, so we pro so, anyway, no, 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 so I just, no, I just I'm mentioned probably, probably for gonna, a while. Probably gonna use, <laughs> I'm probably going to lose maybe about 30 subscribers, so it's all good because two, two black guys saying <laughs> they didn't vote for Obama. Like, for me, let me put it out there for the guys out there. Again, I don't, we don't, I don't, that's probably the most we ever talk about politics. I mean, it's kind of wrapped up because we're talking, we're going to hit on the corona stuff here in a second again. Uh, also, to bring that up, my uh, video in the title, I put the last corona, that was uh the monetize was limited because I guess they looked at it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You, you put COVID or Corona anywhere near yeah. your post, you yeah. get demonetized. So it, well, they, they didn't take it off. Is this uh is is partial? So it says lim limited monetization nah. or whatever. So I actually spent the last because of that. I spent uh, about an hour. Um, I had about uh, thirty copyright strikes. People using my videos, which a uh, few of those were mistakes from gaming because it all looks the same. And uh, then I noticed right. because I left GT Network uh, a while ago, and a dude just hit me up for whatever. Yeah, Smart like, man. About a year ago, actually, <laughs> I left uh, GT Network. So I, it's all – and I just checked again because the, the dude Scott hit me up because one of his gamers from GT Network hit him up, and he was like, yo, I use this. And he, this dude's trying to – like, he's a, he's, a, he's a snake, dude. And anybody out there who's on the GT Network and stuff like that, I'll talk, tell you straight up that that shit is bullshit. You get no – they get – they give they pro all the stuff they promised they didn't do. I was contacting GT. I was Absolutely. contacting GT Network to have them post my videos. They should be post like scouring my link and then posting videos. So I made no money as a result right. of those guys. They made all the money. So you're making the dude Absolutely. Scott there, you know, rich or whatever. You see, just you make more money. I made more. I got more yeah. views and more money from simply saying, "Hey guys." You know, literally asking people on my Facebook page or in YouTube, hey, I'm struggling right now. Can you please share yeah. my videos? More people shared my shit yeah. and saw my videos because of that than from yeah. GT Network. Scott, yeah, I, I'm not yeah, going to say anything I mean, negative he's, he's, because again, that's not, not my place. He's always been respectful in which comment in the emails, but it's like he does. It's the, thing, the problem, he, they well, overpromise. The thing, one thing about it, well, it's kind of, I could tell by his nature of emails that they're blanketed and then like the capitalizing of mm -hmm. big and like he sent the email out recently to me the other day again and everything you could tell it was all pre-scripted and he 
put my name in the top. And uh, then it was like stuff was like, you know, big and then what's the plan for this? And again, I mean, he's smart. Everybody's going to capitalize on getting more podcasts out during this time because everybody's consume, consuming more Netflix and Hula and all that stuff right now. But at the same time, man, like it's like when you even talk to people, man, like you can tell when you talk to somebody who knows that's an impersonal email. So, number one, that that's offensive to me yeah. because when I email somebody, I'm I'm telling I'm even if it's a copy one email, I'm still tailoring it more to them. It's not a blanketed statement. Right. So he's and if you reach out to Scott, you're writing yeah. an email, even if it's a long email, you're taking the time to yeah. write that email to him specifically and saying, hey. This is what's going on. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. what I'm seeing. Blah blah blah. Whatever the content so, of so the email will be. I'll emails if I pull them up and show them to y'all. The contents of our emails will be, hey man, you're doing great. I'm like, dude, I got 12 views in the last week. That's not like <laughs> they always be, man. Your analytics, your analytics. I don't know why you want to pull up, man. Your analytics are, are looking good. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you looking at? Like, I have no views. And then when this all this shit went down, like you know, about a year ago, when before that chick went to the thing and shot up YouTube, the uh, you remember that right? Mm-hmm. After that, they they yeah. <laughs> the uh, the uh, yeah. So she gets no views now because she's. I'm only she's laughing dead. because you trivialized yeah. it, and that's what made me. That's what was funny to me. You're like, hey, you know that chick that shot up YouTube, yeah. whatever. And not, not yeah, important. like I, I'm, she shot up YouTube because she's not getting any views, and now she's dead. So you get no views, and your channel's pulled. So like, you fucking lose, lose. So it's like <laughs> that's not good, man. It's a win for YouTube. That's but terrible. anyway, you know, after that, they, they made PewDiePie, all these guys, you know, millionaires. And then now they, I went from getting about 3,000 views, which is generous. I mean, I was getting half of my subscri- subscription base were getting the views. Now I average, on average, I haven't busted a video of 300 views in the last, like, year or so, man. And that's why I stopped. So even with the podcast, it's going up collectively. But it, that's why I don't yeah. go out and shoot videos like that normally because I'm not going to go out there and shoot all this stuff and export all the stuff in, edit it, edit and every edited it. And then, uh, <laughs> and I'm not going to waste this time for 200 views. I'm sorry. I can't do that guys. And I, it, it, yeah, we, we, we I, that's yeah. how I feel about it. It's like, you know, I, I was talking to, um, a gentleman, Patrick Burke, who is a, he's an SEO kind of expert and he helps businesses grow and he focuses on veteran owned businesses. He has a lot. Link me up with that guy. Link me up with him. Yeah. He's he's, uh, he's, he's, he's a fan. Uh, Patrick Burt. You you can find him on my friends list. Next time you're on there, Patrick Burt. And let him know I sent you because that'll give me a little bit of clout uh, with him. Uh, And, um, Anyway, so he's a, he he just that's how, but that's how right. he makes a living. He gets with these big companies. He gets with all these different size companies, and he links them together. Hey, you need help with this? This company does this. Here you go. And he does, and a lot of the stuff he does on his Facebook is mm-hmm. free, which you're never gonna see outside outside of him. You're never gonna see that. Now he does have things that he does that he charges people for, and Drift Taxi is working with him on right. certain things. But with that, um. You know, he 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 share he helps things out. And he helps uh, companies grow. And where I was going mm-hmm. with that is, um, you had mentioned, you know, you're you take the time to to pull, you know, you pull your time out of your day to get 200 views. And that's one of the things I told to him is that because I want to I wanted the I wanted my podcasts and stuff to grow a little bit. And he's like, well, you have to be consistent. And he's like, one of the things I've noticed, one of the things he's noticed in his time with helping people grow to, you know, a million plus subscribers is those people are either putting out, co- you know, bi-weekly content or weekly content, something on a regular thing where people can click on it and go, oh, okay, cool. I know this person's going to be here or I know that Wednesday or Thursday this person's going to have something up and and more and the the more co- consistent you are and the more content you put out the more the algorithm right. finds you so right now i'm at night magic media is at the bottom of the mm-hmm. algorithm like in the cesspit of the algorithm as i if i continue to put out regular content all often and often i share it and other people share it and other people mm-hmm. click like that pr- pulls you up the algorithm so you're 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 no longer at 64 billion you're now at 500 million. Yeah. Well, one thing. So, one, and, and you keep yeah. moving up. One thing. One thing. For, <laughs> so I'm just like, I can't do that yeah. though. I can't always put out well, no, all no, this no. content it's not, because it's not, I it's have not a the job. Content, the content, the content that everyone is always good, man. It's always going to be a good podcast. But like, you're, you, 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 
because I'm your buddy, man, and I I know you a little bit, man. You kind of do <laughs> brag a lot, and you're like, ah, oh, well, subscribe if you want to subscribe, but don't. So it's like you pretty much tell them to fuck off. So like I I just I just don't I just don't say it at all. I let them. I, I used to say like you know, hey man, because that that because so many people get bombarded by, hey man, hit that, smash that like button, smash that. Smash like, dude, that if like you want, like all that every, everybody that I, everyone that I subscribe to, I subscribe to because I wanted to motor trend. For example, be, before they went to the pay subscription, because you know, like roadkill was pretty hot, and then you know I, they did their thing, and, st- and it, I mean, so I look forward to motor trend. Like those videos are, you know, uh, what's yeah, the fry burger and, uh, and 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 uh, the other guy name. But uh, it was it was a, it was a good. St- I mean, it was cool stuff because they kept it real, man. Like there was, I mean, you can see some stuff was fabricated, like. That that broke yeah. that broke like you know it didn't really break they got to make drama because of everything like, for me mm-hmm. if I do that at my shop it would be kind of I I would have to like fabricate stuff but I'm like dude my stuff generally works and comes together because I plan it so people are like man this shit fucking works every time this is boring and if I build if I build a car yeah. to start, you know I think it would do yeah. well though like I think your Subaru build if you would have said hey I'm building yeah. and just I'm speaking yeah. arbitrarily if you would have said I'm taking a real a, a, a Subaru converting it to rear wheel drive and throwing a two JZ in it people would be like absolutely or if you said hey I'm gonna take a stock Subaru and I'm gonna compete in time trials with it but yeah you're right if there was never any drama because you are yeah. methodical that's the problem <laughs> you're methodical you don't. You don't just sit there and say, I'm going to slap yeah. this together. You are, okay, you make a checklist, even if it's a yeah. mental checklist, and you run through those numbers and, and you e- say, okay, and this is that's done, that's for, done, that's, that's done, that's done. That's a shit box. Like, that car is, that car, that yeah, car is exactly. classified as a shit box, but it was lapping GTRs. Like, how does that happen? <laughs> it's because underneath it actually right. is a well-oiled machine with a with the with the roof chopped <laughs> off. And I did I, I got flack because you know I, did you see the Mighty Car Marts when they did theirs? And so I did. It was I did. I, again I like to use the rather ironic. I had that Subaru before that aired and then I'm like fuck man I, now I don't want to do this because it looks like I'm coming right behind these guys. But I was like, you know what? Yep. Actually I look I took it as homework because I seen a few things that they did that made theirs probably not perform as well. Uh case in point was they cut the body before they roll caged it. So it was uh, so when, uh, they, when they cut the body, if you look at the episode, because I've run, I, first one I looked at it was entertainment, and I was like, fuck, they've already done it. Then the second one, I was like, I, I was looking at it to see what they did and didn't do. And uh, when they cut it, it the, the body, you know, went like, it went from straight to like this. So they had to jack it up. And when they jacked mm-hmm. it up and then welded that cage in, it, odds are it was not, it was not uh, really it wasn't perfect. perfect. So yeah. before I made any cuts. I, I welded the cage inside, fully braced it, didn't cut it. Now, do you want to jack the car up? It, it, it rises up evenly on both sides. I took it on Sakuba. There, I mean, alignment was all straight, everything. And I, I so instead of, like, being a, a bitch boy about it, I was like, hey, let me look at this, see what they did, and don't, and don't do that. <laughs> and and I built boy. mine by myself in, what, it was maybe about a total of maybe, what, 20, about 24 hours total. Like if you look from start to finish, wow, and uh, it was pretty good. So I mean that was cool. They got their views, and then I you notice I never put uh, the hashtag super root because like that would be it's just too close, and so many people you know people yeah. trying to ride other people's wave and things like that. And it was cool. I didn't have no issues with MCM. Their footage is good. People say they sold out, dude. They made they made money. They don't have to drive these shitty cars anymore. That's the problem. It's, it's the thing. It's like um, another pe- – so this yeah. is unrelated to cars, but I don't know if you watch Slow Mo Guys. I, I know, yeah. But yeah. Slow Mo Guys, yeah, yeah they, they got a sponsorship from Discovery Networks. And so they put out a bunch of shows that were not only on YouTube, but they were also on YouTube Red. And then they also got showed on live tel- – on actual like network right. television, like cable television. And I respect that hustle. I don't look at it. See, when people are like, oh, but they sold out nah, or they lost. Pe- those That's are people. The- those the people that say that are the type of people that make $17 right. an hour. That And will never make much more than $17 an hour because if they did, they would sell yeah. sell out yeah. too. You know, you, you it's not selling out. It's, it's just like, okay, an example on a more grassroots level is when I was – Let's take when I was actually trying to go through Pro Am in 2009 right. or 2010 or whatever years those were. I was doing exa- I, I I got rid of my Mustang. I bought an S14. Did I want to get rid of my Mustang? No, but an S14 made right. more sense when I was doing the when I was doing Night Magic Radio and we started picking up actual name people that were putting money into our show because we were getting 1500 listeners. 
I d- when they were like, hey, can you can you dial back on the f bombs? You can't. We don't want you to not say them. But if instead of saying five hundred of them, if you could say yeah. thirty of them, well, that would be fantastic. You're, you're in marine mode. It, yeah, right. So Thank I you. professionals. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Unless they're professionals, that for some reason having the microphone within like you know five inches of their face, they're just like, I'm yeah. uncomfortable. So you have to be very careful about that with them. So yeah. it's like, all right, I'll just raise the sensitivity. Yeah, you you got to take into account that women use like five different washcloths when they wash themselves. We use like one or two. You know, I, I think yeah. most men use one, and then most of the most of the fruity men probably use two. And the, yeah, I I consider myself to be pretty yeah. fruity because I have two different types of uh, body yeah. wash. <laughs> and you got the the free the pre wash and then the actual wash. Yeah, I've, I've got the um, because my my beard dries up really easy when it's cold because of the hum- the humidity yeah. super low. So I have one that's like got like argan oil and stuff for my beard, and then I have another one that I just use for everything argan? else. Argan, my butthole. Argan oil. Oh, never heard of that. Man. Yeah, it's because you're black, <laughs> and we typically don't need yeah. that shit. <laughs> that's a, that's definitely a white boy. Well, thing. I've been recording you for the last five minutes, so. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I can live with ready that. Ready to go? All right, I'm cool, always cool, ready man. to go. So we man. jump right into this. Hey guys out there, it's going to be Donnie coming to you with my guy David again. This is going to be normal. It's not. It's not. Uh, like I told you guys, I had a, a, guy, a guest set up, and uh, there was a time difference. I guess daylight savings happened recently. I'm not sure. Uh, J- Japan doesn't do that. So uh, yeah. he was off by an hour, and I got here, and he was already like two thirty his time. So anyway, I hit up David, and of course David responded like always with a Straight up, yes or no. That's all you got to do in the world. Yes or no. So That's anyway, it. getting right to it, man. Like I said, how, how's everything going over there currently right now? Status update and all that crap over there. Um, well, I do, I do want to jump in and say daylight savings time was March yeah. 8th. So he had yeah, a little well, while yes, to adjust. Yeah. But uh... <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, all, it's, all but, um, it's all good out there, man. We'll link up, man. So I don't want to talk. I, I, I'm not, I'm not no. here to talk shit about people. Um... <laughs> He's like, actually, actually, that particular just, like... guy is transitioning out of the uh, military. And he is actually, uh, I'll let, we, when we talk, we'll let him announce the job. He's looking at a cool job opportunity with a actual no, uh, notable uh, company out there who's uh, vet vet uh, run, so I don't want to put that out there until it's you know confirmed that he's gonna get that job. Nice. But yeah, man, it's a pretty pretty cool vet run operation. They made some some uh, videos. I think there were B market videos and uh, movies, and uh, they run a company or stuff like that. And you know, yeah, people know about them. But anyway, yeah, that's yeah. Really so cool. if, once he, uh, I think he's got the job. So that's what the announcement was going to be, and it was going to be pretty cool. So again, tying all the networks together and, and and talking to him. So I'm pretty happy for that guy. But anyway, nice. man, yeah, man, it's um, uh, over here again. Do you want to get right into the stats, or you just want to, you know, talk about the the what's going on, man? Well, I can always talk about yeah. whatever, man. You know me; I can. Rant. I'm a I'm a master bullshit artist. I can talk about whatever for however long you need me to. Um, what's cr- the crazy thing right now is that so you you asked how things are going right now. Things are a little crazy in the old United States yeah. of America. Um, COVID has really changed. A lot of things. Uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a software engineer, a cloud engineer, more specifically. So I tend to work from home mm-hmm. anyway. Um, however, now everyone who can work from home is working from home, and a lot. So if you have a job that you can work remotely at all, um, even if your job has to give you like one of those desk phones that plugs into your network, um, a lot of them are doing that right now, and. Um, What's crazy about that is it's kind of debilitating towards our economy because most of the jobs that make money for America aren't the types of jobs where you can work from home. Uh, Restaurant owners, um, you know, laundromat runners, um, construction workers, and a lot of them. So people are having to determine whether or not they're essential. And it's causing a lot of delays, a lot of hangups, a lot of missed money. And um, it's causing a lot of. I would I would use the word panic. I'm not the type to panic, but I'm, I would say there are definitely a lot of people who are panicking. You see that a lot with our stores. Things are clearing off the shelf as soon as they can stock them, and it's been three weeks since they've announced this whole Corona thing, and there's still people are still running out to the stores as soon as something is in stock to go buy it. Um, I, you know me, I'm a Second Amendment guy. I love guns. I have freaking ten right. of them, <laughs> and. Um, uh, like I just looked around my office. I've got like like, like, like extra real guns. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of course, of course. I've uh, on, on my purse right now is my, my latest idea. purchase. 
this is my baby. Um, this I, I just bought this. This is the Smith and Wesson M and P. Uh, 2.0. Wow. This thing is freaking epic. Love this thing. Hey, hey, go to, um, go, go I've got hey, my go shotgun. Clean up your breasts, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say in the Marine Corps: gear adrift yeah. is a gift. So I don't want any Air Force guys walking in here and stealing yeah. my brass. Uh, so they've got that. I've got um, I got I got some boom sticks, a couple pew pews, uh, some long, some reach out and touch them. 300 wind mag. I know you Jap- Japanese guys don't know what a 300 wind mag is. Mm-hmm. That's about the size of a typical Japanese man's yeah. penis. And um, and uh, that reaches out pretty damn far. Um, but yeah, so that's another thing that's happening right now. And I'm, I'm super okay with everyone running out to buy guns and ammo right now. But um, the anti-gunners really aren't doing it. But what's funny is all the people that used to say things like, oh, you don't need a, a, a rifle with 30, that, that holds 30 rounds are now running out to buy rifles that hold 30 yeah. rounds because they're afraid. Some of, Half of them are afraid that something really bad is going to happen. The other half are afraid that they're going to get mm-hmm. banned super quickly or that the movement of them is going to get stopped. So it's really yeah. crazy times right now. Uh, more importantly and more realistically, what's what's really affecting us right now is um, states uh, nationwide are going into lockdown. I live in Indiana, and Indiana is currently in a lockdown right now. Um, so basically anything non-essential isn't running. So that means you know how I love my whiskey. Um, I can't just run out and buy a bottle of whiskey unless I go to the grocery store, and the grocery stores don't always – you know shelve the greatest whiskey um so it it, the all the alcohol stores are a lot of the alcohol stores are closed uh, unless they're super privately owned and they can kind of run under the radar from the government um speak speak if you're (laughs) yes exactly Uh, (laughs) because it's because we really are bringing back the roaring 20s with our prohibition funny that you mentioned that because i um i had to actually look it up because a lot of people will like they'll correlate the Great Depression with like nineteen twenty, and people say it happened in the twenties, but it was actually like you know 20, yeah. 19, 29 to like nineteen thirty four. Twenty nine. And uh, but it's it's yep. weird, man. This is nineteen twenty nine. That's nine years. It's two thousand twenty. That's almost it, it. almost is happening again. It's yeah, almost, almost hundred years, years, man. Exactly, almost right? hundred full years. So it's man. like it's <laughs> like man, is this pre programmed or? You know, and then what's happening? The biggest thing right now, man, if all this is happening due to politics, because it is alarmingly ironic that this is happening all at the same time as elections about to, you know about to come up. And I'm not, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I mean, I listened to your last podcast. You guys definitely know a lot more about politics than me. But can you like elaborate on that? Or your thoughts on the um, the. Uh, uh, from a conspiracy theory yeah. standpoint, because I could definitely yeah. talk about right. that. That's right. really fun. Um, there are a lot of conspiracy theorists that do believe that um, a lot of this stuff is too well yeah. timed to be coincidence. Um, me personally, I think it's just coincidence. Some person in China bit the head off of a bat and um, they went home and kissed their wife. Their wife went and kissed their kids. Their kids went to school. The virus no, no, no. spread. She, she, she cheated on um, It's pretty much just clear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. She was, you know, freaking eating some other dude's egg rolls. So <laughs> this is just the most racist conversation yeah, we've had so far. Uh, I just want to throw that out there. But uh, no, so that's how a lot of the, uh, so that is conspiracies aside. I, it's purely coincidence that it so happens to have happened on a coming election year. What does that mean for our president, Donald Trump? I have no idea. I am not a Trump supporter. I'm not a Trump hater, but which pisses people off because I'm very centrist. I don't hate Donald Trump, but I don't love him either. So I'm not like, you know, oh, daddy Trump, but I'm also like, I'm not like, get the orange man out of office. Sometimes he has some really good ideas and I'm like, okay, cool. So most of the time, what he says, I'm like, "Wow, dude, please yeah. stop talking. You're it, embarrassing it, the entire yeah. country." Because it does being like, you know, of course, like I, you know, I, I, I model myself after keeping it. You know, people say keeping it real, keeping it straight up. It's just being straightforward yeah. with your thoughts. And he has so much money that he there's, you know, people who don't have a lot of cash. They got to, you know, they bow down and answer to people. He just do, he he doesn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it, you know, they're saying like maybe he's not his net worth is not as much as reported, but he still has more. He he but still has more money than yeah. He still yeah. He still has. He don't. Yeah. He's good. They're like, oh, he doesn't have all those it, billions. It doesn't I'm like, matter. He still it doesn't has, matter. <laughs> yeah, they're like, 
<laughs> CNN did a CNN did a bash yeah. report on him back in 2017 where they're like Donald Trump's actual net worth is closer to 700 million as oh, opposed man, that's, to 7 that's billion. I'm like, amount, man. do you know how much? I'm like, do you know how much shit I would talk if yeah. I had 700 million dollars in liquid yeah. just laying around? I wouldn't give a yeah. shit, dude. What people thought about me? I would just talk and talk and talk, and yeah. that's what he does. He's like, kick me out of yeah, office. What is he oh, well. Because how much does a president make per year? Uh, four hundred thousand. Like he doesn't even, and I think he he pretty much opted out of that. And, and he, yeah, he he and, and he collects none of it. He actually, um, he the so congressional law dictates that the president can make no more than four hundred thousand dollars a year from salary, but can also take home no few, no less than mm. one dollar. So he opts for the dollar, and the rest of it gets dis- distributed back into and the government. Ta- and that's tax, honestly, tax, uh, in tax of, for him, right? Wow. It probably, oh, yeah. yeah, it probably is at some point. But at the same time, four hundred thousand dollars going back into the economy. Not much. Yeah. It's not much. Um, given what I pay in taxes, it, that would take it would take me about ten years to pay that much. But still, that's one person. Yeah. And it- <laughs> Over, over a decade. And the thing about like for most of this stuff, man, with the politics, it with people, you know, they, they try to, you know, they, you know, people, you know, and being a, a black person, all you hear about growing up is, you know, Democrat this, Democrat that. When Obama got when, when yep, Obama yep. got in office and everything, it, it was kind of uh, for me. I was like, I didn't vote for him. It was cool. I didn't vote for anybody, so that's not, it's not nothing against Obama. It's just it was cool to see that people noticed that Obama wasn't your neighborhood watch, your neighborhood you know, housing community president. He was a president of the state of the United <laughs> States. So all these, all these guys in, yes. a, in, a, in a hood, they thought their lives are going to change drastically overnight. And they noticed like, you know, okay, give it a few months, give it a few years. And like, okay, remember it's four years, two terms. It's still the same, right? Like, dude, he's not looking up for, yep. he's looking out for the United States, not Baltimore city, not, you know, not Compton. He's looking out for the entire yeah. United States. And, and uh, exactly. And, Obama did a lot of yeah. great things. I won't lie about that. I was not an Obama supporter either. Man, I'm just a terrible person when it comes to like supporting our presidents. I think uh, I don't think I fully supported a single president we've had. Um, however, I will say that Obama did some really good things. He also did some things that are questionable, but we that's maybe we'll talk right. about that later. But what? Uh, I found it so interesting the amount of people that, as a perfect perfect example, when I was in Georgia, um, Obama was running for for his first term in two thousand eight, and um, I was just doing my rounds, doing some shopping, and <clears throat> a person doing camp a person was there, a young lady, a young black lady was there doing comp- campaigning for Obama votes for Democratic votes. And um, she was she basically gave the whole speech about here's what Obama is bringing to the table. Here's what he proposes. Can we count on your vote for for a president, you know, for uh, Senator at the time, Senator Barack yeah. Obama? And I said, well, I don't know why. <laughs> wh- what what did you say that would make me want to vote for Barack Obama? And. She literally looked. She literally <laughs> at that point looked me in the eyes and said, "Well, because he's black." Yeah, like that, and I was a, like, "That's not a good that's enough a strong, reason to vote for anyone." Right there. <laughs> I mean, but you know, that's what they were saying about right. Hillary Clinton. They were like, "With with Hillary Clinton, she should get a large turnout of female right. voters." And I'm like, "If women, if women will vote for someone strictly because they're a woman, maybe we should take back their ability yeah. to vote." Yeah. And I know a lot of people probably just said, what the actual fuck no, did this that's, dude that's, just that's, say? I mean, that's, that's logical, man. I am serious. It, 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 women make... Okay, here's here's something that I'm going to go off on a yeah, tangent, so problem, forgive problem. me here. I'm going to go off on a tangent. Um, there's a movie that got released called Bombshell. Bombshell is um, a, a feminist angled movie based on the... Um, the atrocities that happened within the Fox News Network, the Weinstein Corporation, and more specifically the Fox News Network, where um, male su- superiors were taking advantage of young females to get them to do things so that they can make it up. So, you know, all kinds of sexual misconduct, sexual abuse, things, yada, yada, yada. And I'm not trying to demean that. This, these were terrible acts that should have never happened. These men should be and hopefully are being punished for 
sexually abusing right. these women. However, the movie performed terribly in the uh, in the box office. It it made back its money, but it didn't do as well as they were hoping. And all of the articles, if you Google bombshell box office, the first 10 links are all about, oh, bombshell bombed at the box office, but it's no surprise with male egos, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so I, I, I did a quick... Um, I did a quick statistic fact lookup because anyone can do this. I said, um, I said female population percentage United States. According to 2018 statistics, females make up 51 percent of the population. Females are the majority of the population in the United States. Therefore, if women want a a female centrist movie to do well, they are in power to do that. Men aren't empowered. Oh, but men have all the power. They have all the money. You make yeah. money. You make more than $20 a year. You can take $20, set it aside, and go see a movie with a bag yeah. of popcorn. <laughs> or you can wait for it to get released on a matinee and go catch it at a 5 a, at a five p.m. showing. Or you can wait for it to come out on Blu-ray and buy the Blu-ray. This movie continues to perform poorly and... I've watched the trailers. I've watched a couple of reviews, and you know I'm a huge right, right, right. movie guy. Yeah, I've got movie there. I've got nearly a thousand movies in my collection. I've got a freaking fifteen thousand watt home theater that competes with my local mm -hmm. cinema for yeah, quality. We'll yeah. I'm a movie guy. Yeah, I'm a movie guy, and I. If women want this, this movie is continuing to perform poorly, even on the Blu-ray and digital releases. I, so I'm just saying, if women want this movie to perform well, they have the power to do that. I've said all of this to say that I, I truly believe that if someone is going to vote for someone based solely on their gender or their color of their skin, they should have their right to vote yeah. stripped. If you are a black man and you vote for a president-elect or a, a president in nomination simply because he's a black man... You should probably, if that's your one issue that you're voting on, regardless of all the fuckery, there's a lot of fucked up shit happening in the United States right now. Regardless of all the bad things that are happening in the United States right now, if you pick out someone to vote for simply because they're black, that's a that's a problem. That's part of the problem that's, that, that exists in the United States. So if you're a female and you vote for Hillary Clinton or Elizabeth Warren simply because they're female then you are part of the problem. Please stop voting so yesterday. We, so we pro so, anyway, no, 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 so I just, no, I just I'm mentioned probably, it for probably gonna, a while. Probably gonna use, <laughs> I'm probably going to lose maybe about 30 subscribers, so it's all good because two, two black guys saying <laughs> they didn't vote for Obama. Like, for me, let me put it out there for the guys out there. Again, I don't, we don't, I don't, that's probably the most we ever talk about politics. I mean, it's kind of wrapped up because we're talking, we're going to hit on the corona stuff here in a second again. Uh, also, to bring that up, my uh, video in the title, I put the last corona, that was uh the monetize was limited because I guess they looked at it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You, you put COVID or Corona anywhere near yeah. your post, you yeah, get demonetized. Yeah. So it, well, they, they didn't take it off. Is this uh is is partial? So it says lim limited monetization nah. or whatever. So I actually spent the la because of that. I spent uh, about an hour. Um, I had about uh, thirty copyright strikes. People using my videos, which a uh, few of those were mistakes from gaming because it all looks the same. And uh, then I noticed right. because I left GT Network uh, a while ago, and a dude just hit me up for whatever. Yeah, Smart like, man. About a year ago, actually, <laughs> I left uh, GT Network. So I, it's all – and I just checked again because the, the dude Scott hit me up because one of his gamers from GT Network hit him up, and he was like, yo, I use this. And he, this dude's trying to – like, he's a, he's, a, he's a snake, dude. And anybody out there is, is, is on the GT Network and stuff like that, I'll talk you, tell you straight up that that shit is bullshit. You get no – they get – they give they pro, all the stuff they promised, they didn't do. I was contacting GT. I was Absolutely. contacting GT Network to have them post my videos. They should be post like scouring my link and then posting videos. So I made no money as a result right. of those guys. They made all the money. So you're making the dude Absolutely. Scott there, you know, rich or whatever. You see, just you make more money. I made more. I got more yeah. views and more money from simply saying, "Hey guys," you know, literally asking people on my Facebook page or in YouTube, "Hey." I'm struggling right now. Can you please share yeah. my videos? More people shared my shit yeah. and saw my videos because of that than from yeah. GT Network. Scott, yeah, I, I'm not yeah, going to say anything I mean, he's, he's, because again, that's not, not my place. He's always been respectful and which comes in the emails, but it's like 
he does is the thing. The problem he, they you know, over the thing, one thing about it, well, it's kind of I could tell by his nature of emails that they're blanketed, and then like the capitalizing of mm-hmm. big and like he sent the email all recently to me the other day again, and everything you could tell it was all pre scripted, and he put my name in the top, and uh, then it was like stuff was like you know big, and then what's the plan for this and. Again, I mean, he's smart. Everybody's going to capitalize on getting more podcasts out during this time because everybody's consuming, consuming more Netflix and Hula and all that stuff right now. But at the same time, man, like it's like when you even talk to people, man, like you can tell when you talk to somebody who knows that's an impersonal email. So number one, that that's offensive to me yeah. because when I email somebody, I'm I'm telling I'm even if it's a copy one email, I'm still tailoring it more to them. It's not a blanketed statement. Right. So he's. And if you reach out to Scott, you're writing an email, even if it's a long email, you're taking the time to yeah. write that email to him specifically and saying, hey, this is what's going on. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. what I'm seeing, blah, 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 whatever the content so, of so the email may be. I'll email if I pull them up and show them to you. I'll, the contents of our emails would be, hey, man, you're doing great. I'm like, dude, I got 12 views in the last week. That's not like <laughs> they always be, man, your analytics, your analytics. I don't know why you want to pull up, man, your analytics are, are looking good. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you looking at? Like, I have no views. And then when this all this shit went down, like, you know, about a year ago, when before that chick went to the thing and shot up YouTube, the uh, you remember that, right? Mm-hmm. After that, they... they <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, yeah, so she gets no views now because she's... I'm only she's laughing dead. because you trivialized yeah. it. And that's what made me... That's what was funny to me. You're like, hey, you know, that chick that shot up YouTube, yeah. whatever. And not, not yeah, like, I'm, I'm, she shot up YouTube because she's not getting any views and now she's dead. So you get no views and your channel's pulled. So, like, you fucking lose-lose. So it's like, <laughs> that's not good, man. It's a win for YouTube. That's but terrible. Any, anyway, you know, after that, they, they made PewDiePie, all these guys, you know, millionaires, and then now they... I went from getting about 3,000 views, which is generous. I mean, I was getting half of my subscri- subscription base were getting the views. Now I average, on average, I haven't busted a video of 300 views in the last, like, year or so, man. And that's why I stopped. So even with the podcast, it's going up collectively. But it, that's why I don't yeah. go out and shoot videos like that normally because I'm not going to go out there and shoot all this stuff and export all this stuff in, edit it, edit, and every edited it. And then, uh, <laughs> and I'm not gonna waste this time for 200 views. I'm sorry, I can't do that, guys. And I, it, it, yeah, we, 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 I, that's yeah. how I feel about it. It's like you know, I, I was talking to um, a gentleman, Patrick Burke, who is a he's an SEO kind of expert, and he helps businesses grow, and he focuses on veteran-owned businesses. He has a lot. Link me up with that guy. Link me up with him. What's his? Yeah, he's he is a what's his name again? Uh, Patrick Burt, you, you can find him on my friends list next time you're on there. Patrick Burt. Um, and let him know I sent you because that'll give me a little bit of please, clout please. Uh, with him. Uh, and um, anyway, so he's a, he, he just that's how, but that's how right. he makes a living. He gets with these big companies. He gets with all these different size companies and he links them together. Hey, you need help with this. This company does this. Here you go. And he does. And a lot of the stuff he does on his Facebook is mm-hmm. free which you're never going to see outside outside of him. You're never going to see that. Now he does have things that he does that he charges people for. And drift taxi is working with him on certain right. things. But with that, um, you know, he, 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 he shared, he helps things out and he helps uh, companies grow. And where I was going mm-hmm. with that is um, you had mentioned, you know, you're, you, you take the time to, to pull, you know, you pull your time out of your day to get 200 views. And that's one of the things I told to him is that because I want to, I wanted the, I wanted my podcasts and stuff to grow a little bit. And he's like, well, you have to be consistent. And he's like, one of the things I've noticed, one of the things he's noticed in his time with helping people grow to, you know, a million plus subscribers, is those people are either putting out, co- you know, biweekly content or weekly content, something on a regular thing where people can click on it and go, oh, okay, cool, I know this person's going to be here, or I know that Wednesday or Thursday this person's going to have something up and and more and the the more co- consistent you are and the more content you put out the more the algorithm right. finds you so right now i'm at night magic media is at the bottom of the mm-hmm. algorithm like in the cesspit of the algorithm as i if i continue to put out regular content all often and often i share it and other people share it and other people mm-hmm. click like that pr- pulls you up the algorithm so you're 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 no longer at 64 billion 
you're now at 500 yeah. million. Yeah, well, one thing. So, one, and, and you keep yeah. moving up. One thing. One thing. For, <laughs> so I'm just like, I can't do that yeah. though. I can't always put out well, all no, no, this content no, not, because. I have not a the, job. Content, you, the content that we want is always good, man. It's always going to be a good podcast. But like you're, you, 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 because I'm your buddy, man, and I, I know you a little bit, man. You kind of you <laughs> brag a lot, and you're like, ah, oh, well, subscribe if you want to subscribe, but don't. So it's like you pretty much tell them to fuck off. So like I, I just, I just, don't, <laughs> I just don't say it at all. I let them. I, I used to say like you know, hey man, because that that because so many people get bombarded by, hey man, hit that, smash that like button, smash that. Like, dude, that, like, if you want, like all that every, everybody that I, everyone that I subscribe to, I subscribe to because I wanted to motor trend. For example, be, before they went to the pace description, because you know, like roadkill was pretty hot, and then you know I, they did their thing. And, st- and it, I mean, so I look forward to motor trend. Like those videos, uh, you know, uh, what's yeah, the fry burger and uh, and and, and uh, the other guy name. But uh, it was it was a, it was a good. St- I mean, it was cool stuff because they kept it real, man. Like there was, I mean, you can see some stuff was fabricated, like. That that broke yeah. that broke like you know it didn't really break they got to make drama because of everything like, for me mm-hmm. if I do that at my shop it would be kind of I I would have to like fabricate stuff but I'm like dude my stuff generally works and comes together because I plan it so people are like man this shit fucking works every time this is boring and if I build if I build a car yeah. to start, you know I think it would do yeah. well though like I think your Subaru build if you would have said hey I'm building yeah. and just I'm speaking yeah. arbitrarily if you would have said I'm taking a real a, a, a Subaru converting it to rear wheel drive and throwing a two JZ in it people would be like absolutely or if you said hey I'm gonna take a stock Subaru and I'm gonna compete in time trials with it but yeah you're right if there was never any drama because you are yeah. methodical that's the problem <laughs> you're methodical you don't. You don't just sit there and say, I'm going to slap yeah. this together. You are, okay, you make a checklist, even if it's a yeah. mental checklist, and you run through those numbers and, and you say, okay, and this is done, that's done, that's done, that's done. That's even done, for that's a shit box. Like, that car is, that car, that yeah, car is exactly. classified as a shit box, but it was lapping GTRs. Like, how does that happen? <laughs> it's because underneath it actually right. is a well-loyal machine with a with the with the roof chopped <laughs> off. And I did I, I got flack because you know I, did you see the Mighty Car Marts when they did theirs? And so I did. It was I did. I, again I like to use the rather ironic. I had that Subaru before that aired and then I'm like fuck man I, now I don't want to do this because it looks like I'm coming right behind these guys. But I was like, you know what? Yep. Actually I look I took it as homework because I seen a few things that they did that made theirs probably not perform as well. Uh case in point was they cut the body before they roll caged it. So it was uh, so when, uh, they, when they cut the body, if you look at the episode, because I've run, I, first one I looked at it as entertainment, and I was like, fuck, they've already done it. Then the second one, I was like, I, I was looking at it to see what they did and didn't do. And uh, when they cut it, it the, the body, you know, went like, it went from straight to like this. So they had to jack it up. And when they jacked mm-hmm. it up and then welded the occasion, it, odds are it was not, it was not. Uh, really it wasn't perfect. perfect so yeah. before I made any cuts. I, I welded the cage inside, fully braced it, didn't cut it. Now, do you want to jack the car up? It, it, it rises up evenly on both sides. I took it on Sakuba. There, I mean, alignment was all straight, everything. And I, I so instead of like being a, a bitch boy about it, I was like, hey, let me look at this, see what they did, and don't, and don't do that. <laughs> and and I built boy. mine by myself in what? It was maybe about a total of maybe, what, 20, about 24 hours total. Like if you look from start to finish, wow, and uh, it was pretty good. So I mean that was cool. They got their views, and then I you notice I never put uh, the hashtag super root because like that would be it's just too close, and so many people you know people yeah. are trying to ride other people's wave and things like that. And it was cool. I didn't have no issues with MCM. Their footage is good. People say they sold out, dude. They made they made money. They don't have to drive these shitty cars anymore. That's the problem. It's, it's the thing. It's like um, another pe- – so this yeah. is unrelated to cars, but I don't know if you watch Slow Mo Guys. I, I know, yeah. But yeah. Slow Mo Guys, yeah, yeah they, they got a sponsorship from Discovery Networks. And so they put out a bunch of shows that were not only on YouTube, but they were also on YouTube Red. And then they also got showed on live tel- – on actual like network right. television, like cable television. And I respect that hustle. I don't look at it. See, when people are like, oh, but they sold out nah, or they lost. Pe- those That's are people. Good. Those the people that say that are the type of people that make $17 right. an hour. That will, And will never make much more than $17 an hour. Because if they did, they would sell yeah. sell out yeah. too. You know, you, you it's not selling out. It's, it's just like, okay, 
an example at a more grassroots level is when I was – let's take when I was actually trying to go through Pro-Am in 2009 right. or 2010 or whatever years those were. I was doing exa- – I, I, I got rid of my Mustang. I bought an S14. Did I want to get rid of my Mustang? No. But an S14 made right. more sense. When I, was doing the, when I was doing Night Magic Radio and we started picking up actual name people that were putting money into our show because we were getting 1,500 listeners – I d- when they were like, hey, can you can you dial back on the f bombs? You can't. We don't want you to not say them, but if instead of saying five hundred of them, if you could say yeah. thirty of them, well, that would be fantastic. You're, you're in marine mode, though, so it's- <laughs> yeah, right. So I use the word fuck like a comma. So yeah. um, fuck, fuck. So you yeah, fuck, 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 fucking, fucking, fuck, fuck. Like, how did he conjugate the word fuck 17 ways? That's weird. Um, so you don't sell out. You just – you do what's going to bring right. in money, especially if you have a passion for something. These guys, just because the, guy, the slow-mo guys were making a ton of money – not a ton of money, but the, just because they were making a, a, an amount of money, whatever that amount of money was, it doesn't mean their passion for slow motion – and discovering things in slow-mo and utilizing those high-speed cameras doesn't mean any of that faded mm-hmm. anymore. Just like with yourself, if you picked up a bunch of big sponsors and a bunch of people, you know, uh, wanted to start dumping money into into your shop and into your drifting, it doesn't mean you would care about working on cars less or you wouldn't care about the builds. But if they said, hey, can you do yeah. this? The, you and and you were like, hey, we were we're dumping. Hey, he, if they if they gave you a hundred thousand dollars, you know, I'm, no, I'm no, speaking no, in American no, money. Okay. I'm sorry, but if they gave you a hundred thousand dollars to do X Y Z, and they're like, we have our fingers over the check right now. All we have to do is press this button, and you have a hundred thousand dollars to. But we want you to do right. this, this, and this, and we want you to do it in this, this, right. and this way. I don't know about you. But I would be like, yeah. okay, what do yeah, you so need to what, 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 Explaining that right there is, is a prime example of growth. Me, about six years ago, I'll be like, yeah, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. But now, dude, I, I'd like the ED, I'm pretty sure you've seen me post about the EDEL clutch that I, I was a sponsor or a seller for those guys. Yep. Then you yep. fast forward two weeks later, I'm not I'm not doing it anymore because they they mm-hmm. what they promised before I made that announcement and what they actually provided after I made that announcement was not, it's not, it's not I'm not going to do it. And I was like, yeah, uh, we can end this right now. I'm not going to go further, man. And that's where me, I'm going to cut the bullshit out because you're already going to deal. You're already going to deal yeah, with people in this industry that that'll they'll again, like you say, you're making money. You kind of have to deal with some people sometimes. Is 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 some, right. some there, actors? Yeah, because at yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, the CEO. That's one thing I've learned from working with big businesses. At the end of the day, the CEO doesn't make any of the right. decisions. The CFO mm. does. The person handling the money makes all right. of the decisions. The CEO can be like, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. And the CFO goes, well, we can make, we can save a billion dollars a year by doing this. The CEO is going to go, okay, yeah. let's do that. And unfortunately, my, in my case, I'm all those titles because I'm the owner operator and every, I'm the, I'm the tech. Oh, yeah, so I do, absolutely. So I'm thinking, that's, and that's where everybody don't understand when they deal with me. And they think that when they talk, when they talk to me at the shop and we'll get off this really quickly because I don't want to talk about my business. But the, uh, when, when they come and deal I, with me, they they think they're talking to one guy, and they like when they they say you guys. I actually don't correct anybody anymore because I actually I am doing multiple people jobs. But when people say, "Hey man, I heard you guys do this," I'm like, "It's just me. It's no guys here." It, it, and if they like really is you, and they, they see the they see the web page, they see the cars moving, they see the. I'm like, dude, I do. I don't have anybody posting for me. I do my taxes. I do these videos. <laughs> I do the editing. I do the music. Everything and it's like, how do you yep. do that? I'm like, dude, it's time management. It means that I don't. I got the game stuff downstairs, but I don't. I haven't touched it in eight months, nine months for my own enjoyment, and it's probably been longer than that. That's just there for customers. I'm like, dude, your your time management. I mean, I, I did. I watched Tiger King. We'll talk about that. And I'm pretty sure everybody's talking. You seen it yet? You got you got to watch because you got to just sit back and awe and admire the white trash, man. But it's 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 just <laughs> yeah. So I, w- I want you to watch that first if if you can if you if you can stomach it and then I want to talk about that because it, it's. It, no, I'm just gonna order yeah. some more uh, some more pinku yeah. style stickers. I know I usually buy them like a yeah. hundred at a time. But, the, uh, but yeah, man. The, uh, but, well, I got I got I'm good on sticker meal with that stuff. But anyway, man. The um the what the hell is I talking about really quickly? The, I just got one on the. Uh, 
uh, we were talking about uh, selling out yeah, to we're, corporations we're out. And as said, they're doing stuff, and you left and PDL. I said that for the business stuff. The uh, again, when they when guys talk to me, they because I I'm very I'm I'm approachable to the point where I don't want to talk to you anymore. So it's like approachable, approachable, fuck off. And and people get that abrupt. Even even guys <laughs> that I've I've dealt with a bunch when they say something and they they feel comfortable, I got to bring it back down to earth because like, dude, this is business. We could be buddies. Outside of this, and I generally want to make friends with people with the business stuff. But when I do, I gotta let them know, hey, we can be buddies or friends. But there's, you're gonna still pay me, you know what I mean? And they some they they like right. they gave me the look like, oh man, I thought we was cool. We shook hands firmly. I'm like, nah, dude, you still gotta pay. Like a firm <laughs> hands, <laughs> we shook, we shook <laughs> like, hands. Like each other in the eyeballs. Like a firm <laughs> handshake doesn't pay bills, you know what I mean? It, 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 it's a compliment, but exactly. Anyway, when they talk to me, they don't realize they're talking to the, the, the owner, operator. So I'm thinking about multiple things when you talk to me, not only – I like the background blur right there. Not only with the uh, – Yeah, that's really cool. I I, I just found that like setting. That's the, porn, the Pornhub <laughs> setting right there with the – Yeah, with the um, – LA is a cool – that's a cool thing right there. But anyway, man, the – um, anyway, what I'm, what I'm saying, I'm, I'm going on a rant, but it's cool. It's long form. Anyway, when you talk to me, guys are there, you're dealing with like a guy that runs multiple facets. I'm thinking about multiple things. So when you bring your shit box to me, I'm not going to be like, yeah, let's throw it on the lift. I'm like, no, does it work first? Because I got to factor in my time and my time is very limited. So anyway, getting off that, the um, as far as selling out for me, what I would do, man, again, six years ago, I would say, yeah, cut that check. But now I'm like, let me see the terms. And, that, and that's like, I guess, a, a, a growth that you understand, I understand, and everybody understands, yep. dude. There's always a fine writing, and within that fine writing, there's always some shit that ain't stated. So you gotta read all that shit. You gotta read your terms and contracts. Again, when I, guys are there, I put up the sponsor video. If you and I, and I made my sponsors quote unquote angry because they saw the video, and only one of those guys issued a contract out of all those guys. So now you know, you notice I don't promote any of those motherfuckers anymore. I don't. There, that that suit I have, right. I don't wear it anymore. They. There was there was a verbal email agreement. There was nothing written on paper that says these are your terms, these are my terms, and they were using me. I mean, they were using everybody out there who don't who don't do that. So if you got a sponsor, you didn't sign a contract. You don't have a sponsor. You're getting fucked. So let's move. So oh move yeah, on. absolutely. So read the read, read the fine contract. If they say, can you build this? But can you build this in, in 25 days and and have the video footage and everything and you know on a 26 day? No, you can't because you can't edit, build, and all that shit at the same time. So you got to read before you sign a contract out there, which I would do. I read the, read the terms. And also, is it going to affect my business? Because you know a lot of those uh, reality shows, they fold. They end up folding. And some of, one of them actually used it as mm. drama. The one guy in, uh, it was in Canada. It, it, was, um, it was called like Rust to something. And uh, they were, the guy had too many cars. He had, so he did, he had about 500 or something cars. You got you to gotta see it if you don't know what I'm talking about. But he has like 500 cars. But... He doesn't want to sell any of them, and they're all like just sitting there. He he can't build all these cars, so they they would take they would go in a junkyard, right. take the car out, build it, quote unquote. They ain't the same guys. Are there to realize they hate to break your hearts. Those cars are not the same cars. They they get they they put the shit box up there, then they go buy an actual car, and then they, they that's how they do it. So they don't build that fucking car, man. Yeah. And that's what I would do. It would be boring though because it would be built. And there wouldn't be a swap out. <laughs> and I did. I can pull that with a cappuccino because I do have a cappuccino with rusted chassis. So I and I got a brand new chassis with no rust. So I can like, yeah, I got this in and then morph it. But people have been to my shop and seen two cappuccinos, so they would know it's a falsary. They would call me out on it. I would just I would just buy a yeah. cappuccino, like yeah. a running driving cappuccino, rip the engine out, put a new engine, and be like, yeah. look what I did! Yeah. I'm amazing. So, I mean, this the the, uh, the one I have <laughs> doesn't have an engine, but it's a, a zero rust body, so that it's a good base. But anyway, uh, the. You got again with that. If I if that got to that point, and I'm pretty sure it will, somebody will come my way and they'll see stuff. And it only takes one person to recommend somebody, and uh, they'll mm-hmm. come my way and they'll probably want me to do something and they'll see what I'm capable of. The cappuccino, I can, I guarantee you right now is gonna it's gonna launch a worldwide uh, epidemic for like a week or so, and then it'll you know they get shared around and everything. So I already got the like. It'll be like yeah. coronavirus all so over again. That'll put it out there. But again, for me, I'm not going to jump at anything to do anything. So I guess selling out, you would do that if you don't take and you don't hold your. Uh, and there's a thing if you don't hold your morals or your your goals in in uh, in perspective with what they're asking. So if you're if you're going to abandon your shop and your customers for this hundred thousand dollar check. Which honestly, I mean, I make I make about that much more in, in, uh, per year before taxes. 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put right. my business in jeopardy for a one time project that's might that may that may not go. So I'll be like, hey, I actually need this much to cover my business because right. I'm not yeah. Oh, so absolutely. I'll be like, hey, I'm gonna need uh, 350k to cover my business plus this project plus the expense plus the promotion. Yeah, for all yeah, yeah. for all the work that's not going right, exactly. to get done. Exactly. So that hundred k, while it looks enticing to somebody who doesn't make money, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm not I'm not Trump by any means, but I I have made over ninety ninety thousand dollars, and that's just like the in shop money, not the online stuff and everything else. But again, I don't, right. I don't I'm not banking all that because I got to pay taxes, I got to I got to pay bills, so I, I'm still paying more money out than what I make. You know what I mean? So think about that, man. So yep. when you get to a certain level of money, people just assume money is going to erase all issues. You know this is not the case. It just makes, you know what I mean, it, it makes life easier. Uh, but like, yeah. And even then, that's 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 that's, yeah. that's highly yeah, again, subjective again, yeah, yeah, yep, because. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Is, that, we, we can go, we can go <laughs> deep on this. I don't want, I don't, I got Dave here, so I, uh, yeah. Yeah, we could get yeah. super philosophical on money versus happiness here. But yeah, just, just, uh, yeah, just, I guess. Just extracting any 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 piece of that stuff I just said, man. You can continue talking, man. <laughs> no, 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 no! Don't yeah. don't get don't get all freaking. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want it because I mean, I when I like when I edit now, I don't like when I'm my videos. I like because I I have I like you you're, you're a great talker. So when I'm doing my editing, if I clip through it and I just click on it and it's me talking, me, I'm like fuck. That it was it's just me talking. If it, if it's like yep 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 like yep, ten yep. minutes, yeah, yeah that's, that's great. great. You're accounting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care, dude. I treat see, my problem is I'm treating your show like yeah. it's my man, show, it's so good, I jump man. in and I'm just that's like good. I just start talking, and then when you start talking and I want to jump in, I'm like yeah. wait a minute. This yeah, is no, his no, show. it's all good. It's all good, man. But it's all good. But but uh, we are we actually skipped the. Uh, we, we skipped the. I'm making like my little my my notes here, but we actually. Sh- I see that. That's super professional. Well, I like just that. because when you're like you're talking, I just wanted to um instead of like hey, yeah jumping in. I, that's why I wrote Patrick's name down because I just want to make a note for myself because I'm definitely gonna contact Patrick there. And uh, again, it's a growth thing, man. I I do a lot of shit myself, but Patrick is a professional in what he does, and he could definitely help me. And that thing about it, mm-hmm. man, it's like in business, man, you have to. At a certain, I guess, at a certain, at Trump level, you can you can be as profitable as you want and boast because you got the money to back up what you're saying. But at my level, again, I'm making more than the average Joe. But there's definitely still room for growth and and uh, networking with the right people because as many people you get on your, I mean, we're we're a network, and as many good good guys as you had, it's always shitty guys that come in your life for two weeks and they leave out. Again, that company, two they let yep. three weeks, and I gave them more time than they gave me. I made spreadsheets. I did a bunch of shit that I shouldn't have did. I invested about three, four hours into this company. To that was three, four hours that I wasted, man. So it, to pretty much right, end absolutely. up with the last thing, I sent out an email, no response. I sent out a, I sent out a statement saying I'm going to going to uh, announce the D partnership, no response. So I'm like, eh, fuck you guys, man. I deleted them, blocked them. It's like, <laughs> so that, that mean, and it sucks. Yeah. It yeah, sucks it a does, lot, man. man. That's that's a lot of yeah. time wasted, especially if you start doing like a lot of like when I, when I was when I owned my own uh, IT consulting company. One of the things I did was I equated anything yeah. I did in a day. I looked at how much I made that year and I broke it down into dollars right. per hour. And I, so if I was let's say I'm uh, let's say a, a neighbor like I was living in an apartment complex at the time. If a neighbor would have been like, hey, can you fix my computer? I go, okay, I typically make approximately $65 to $70 an hour before taxes. How much of that am I going to get back from this person? Or how much time am I going to waste? Because they may hand me a computer that seems like a quick 20 minute fix and it winds up taking, and you know, and at the end of the, at the end of it, once it all wraps up, I spent four hours working on it. I'm like, wow, I just wasted $300 of my time. Fixing this person's computer yeah, for man. free. I did, dude, I did a lot of that, man, back in the day. Like, and it was more of a, I was, I'm pretty sure we've been along the same lines, man. You go over family, I'll say, hey, man, actually, man, my, my computer's not acting right. And I'm like, all right, let me, because I was into the computer thing. So, dude, I did so many, yeah, I did so many house visits. And it was cool. I, I like, what I liked is when I fixed it. And they be, they start praising you like, yeah, man, you're good. And I'm like, yeah, cool. And then I would, I got, yeah, it's yeah. a nice ego. Ch- it's nice I got, for the ego. I got, it it, it works. Pretty much nobody. I was nobody. 
I mean, honestly, being a black dude from Baltimore City, not many people know how to install RAM. <laughs> yeah. Not many people know how to install a processor or stuff like that. So I, I, I did that a bunch. My mom kept talking about me, and then I would go over a friend house. I'm like, where are we going at? And they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, her, her. I'm like, shoot. Then, then it started getting into, like, you know, dragging me into shit I didn't want to do. You're like, yeah, come I on. My, my, my CDs are there. <laughs> my, all my, my test gear, my electric static wristband is back at the house. And then, you know, I'm like, yeah, so I look like I'm like I show up and they give me a fucking butter knife to pop some some screws off the, the cabinet. I'm like, dude, this is not. They're <laughs> like, wait, you can't use this? Yeah. You can't yeah. use this? To... <laughs> yeah, like I'll, stick, I'll stick that shit in your PCI socket and bridge it. But the uh, right. but yeah, man, so yeah, like, right? that, that got old quickly around about, I think, right right after I finished. I'm like, don't I'm like, mom, don't fucking tell your friends I fix computers anymore. And I stopped saying it. Because people were just calling me specifically to fix the computer, then the car. So then it was like, oh, yeah, you can change the brakes. And, you know, oh, man. So two times, and I've done it before. I've, I've, I've changed somebody brakes at the house. And then also, I, they fucking took their web dings off because they had web dings enabled on a, on a uh, Microsoft. Uh, yeah. Oh, so they thought they had wow. a virus. And now, dude, you, you got web dings too on. So that, that's why yeah, <laughs> that's why you're doing it. I'm going to start sending all all of my Facebook status updates are now going to be in. Uh, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> those shit was like, it was like, I got, I'm like, yeah, this what's called, like, what is web things? Like, you put, you hit that there and it's a, just fuck, like, oh, I didn't know about that. Like, the baby must have done. I'm like, all right, whatever, man. But, but yeah, dude, it's, whatever. People, like, yeah, man, people really don't understand. And I, that's one thing I value, man. And again, it's not, when I, when I give an estimate out to customers, like, I used to explain it a little bit to, but then I realized after w- watching a few videos and like the dudes like, dude, you're they're coming to you. You don't explain. You don't explain. You just tell them how much it is. Take it or leave it. When I go to another company and they say how yeah. much like I got a quote to put uh, for to put new rocks down on my lot because it's cheaper than doing blacktop, which I'm not going to do for a rented place. Again, being a I got to think I'm, I'm renting yep. this. So I'm not going to spend eighty thousand dollars to to blacktop a lot that I'm renting. Fuck that. I'm not. Yeah, to make you're not going to yeah. spend that much money to make well, their exactly. value so, go you know, up. And, I, I, and I'm pretty <laughs> solid here. This place is more than big. If I outgrow this business, I'm doing very, very, very well. If I if I outgrow this spot, so if I do that, then I, that's actually a good thing. And I'm looking at a big ass warehouse. But anyway, and I, it's like I don't stop looking too. I get here and I'm like, cool. But what, there's more, and that's uh, people out there, man. You just yeah, keep of course, going higher and higher. But anyway, so I got quoted four four thousand dollars to to, and that's actually. Uh, for them to throw down the rocks and everything and, and grade it and sort it for the whole lot, it's actually not a bad price. And I, guys out there are like, what do you mean that's not a bad? Like, dude, for there, you're looking at the rocks, the machines, the, the workers' time, and everything to come out here and do that within two days, that's actually that's not a bad price. So a business to yep. business, I understand it. But the regular person, when you say, hey, it's going to be 40, 40, 40, 480 bucks uh, equivalent for this service, and he's like, dude, it's only four hours. I'm like, yeah. I charge a hundred and hundred bu- hundred bucks an hour, yeah. So and that, plus tax and everything. So that, yeah. and actually, you're not, you know, what I mean, and if you're a return customer, I give you a little bit off. But after doing my taxes, how much? How, how does tax work it's, in uh, it's the same. Japan? Uh, the, a quick, a quick five second uh, overview. Taxes ten percent. It was eight percent in October two thousand nineteen. Went up to ten percent. So ten percent of every, like ten percent of three hundred fifty bucks plus that. So three hundred fifty bucks is like what you make plus ten percent is what. You, so you got to add the percentage there, and you're done. So at the end of the gotcha. year, when you add up all your tax, so which company expect that money back? So, so if yes, you're spending the tax, oh, oh, sorry about that. In correlation to how much you're putting out. So right now, my saving grace is I'm still. I just moved here, so like the paint, the new stuff, the new electrical two hundred volt. I've I've kind of went back to three years ago where when I was first starting, my output was higher than my income because you know you're buying all the shit. So that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah, so of course. Taxes is the same here. It's the same in Bangladesh. It's the same. It's all corrupt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Taxation is theft. That's yeah. just and how then, I feel about it. And then somebody it. brought, I was listening to the podcast the other day, somebody brought it up, that $1,200 that they're going to give back, they're giving you the, they're, give, they're, they're giving you back your tax money a little earlier. Yeah. That's it. And there's actually, I, I, I was asking, so yeah. I'm going to go no, on, a, go on please, another please, please. tangent. Um, someone posted about the COVID-19 stimulus package for America. And they were like, you know, $1,200 starting at $75,000 up to $99,000 with, um, it's $50 for every, uh, hundred dollars you go up, you get $50 less. So up to $99,000. Right. That said, 
I said, wow, I'm well outside of that. Like, I don't have to worry about getting any money right. back from the government. But someone actually mentioned that um, that it's actually just being deferred out of your 20, whatever your 2020 filing will be. So whenever you file your taxes in 2021, mm -hmm. it's, defer it's uh. deferred out of that. <laughs> I don't see that doesn't sound like a stimulus package to me. It does sound like something the Republicans would do, but it doesn't sound like a stimulus package. So I asked them to send me the text from that, and they weren't able to send that to me. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's not. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to assume that it is tax dollars. And it's money that it's two trillion dollars that we as the United States of America simply don't have. We're just going to print that print yeah. that money and further, um, and further devalue but, the dollar. Yeah. Absolutely. But I would love to see what the fine print that made that person say that. I would love to see what, 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 what made them say that because – and the reason – and I don't – you like you made the joke earlier and I realize you're just poking fun at me. Um, you mentioned that I humble brag. Um, when I made that comment, I felt I needed to preclude or pre pre precede, precede by saying I am – not in any danger of getting the twelve hundred dollars back. I am so far above right. that cap that they would look at me and say, "You owe right. us twelve hundred bucks." <laughs> <Yeah. Fuck you." laughs> Just for reaching out yeah. to us, we're gonna send you a bill for twelve hundred yeah. bucks. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you, you, I, I felt I needed to say something scum. along those lines, not to show off, and because a lot of people say, "Oh, way to flex" or yeah, whatever yeah, they have you. People, I'm not yeah. flexing. I'm not flexing. I'm not bragging. I personally, I don't feel that. I I don't care if you make a million dollars a second. If you've worked your ass off, especially if you've worked your ass off to get to that point. If you're a billionaire, if you started like how you did and how I did, and you worked your way up to being a millionaire or yeah. a billionaire or even several hundred thousand, you you deserve to say whatever you want because it's not bragging. It's simply stating the facts right. of the matter. If you if you were struggling every single day and you were like, man, I make forty five thousand dollars a year and that's on a good year, no one would say you were flexing. People would welcome your comments because because but, because okay, that's, I'm gonna throw, that's the average guy though, yeah. Right, and if I, I'm going to throw my salary out there for a second, the second I let people know that I'm making one hundred and forty thousand dollars a year at thirty five years old. People are like, oh, you're bragging, you're showing off. Way to flex, Mister Porsche driver. I'm like. Am I, am I, Dude, do you know yeah, what yeah, I yeah. do for a living? I do know how hard, do you, especially, and I'm not going to make this about race, but do you know, especially as a black male in America, how hard you have to push and grind right. and 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 force your way through the, the right. hustle to get to where I am now? It's not like it's super simple to get there and not like I sit there and I'm like, oh, I just lay back in my bed and make a million dollars. No. I really do work. And I mean, anyone who's called me during the day between 0800 and 1600, and now I'm like, I can't talk. I'm in a meeting. They know how freaking hard mm. I work. So uh, I don't say these things to brag. I say these things to draw context and to, so that you can see where I'm coming from. And what, the reason why I'm saying all of this is because when I'm sitting, when I asked about the $1,200 and what he was saying about it being deferred out of your 2020, your 2020 filing, I was like, it's not like I'm. I'm not speaking as someone who's in that's going to get a $1,200 check and then it's going to be taken out of my 2020 taxes. I'm speaking as someone who doesn't take, who doesn't believe what people post in their statuses. Right. If you post it as a status without a reference link. I am not – I don't care who you are. You could be my mom. If you say, oh, this is the way this is, and you don't show me the text from that, I'm going to say, I don't think that's right. true. And if you then go back and show me the text, I'll say, oh, okay, cool. I believe you now. But until then, you, you, you're you just speaking, and I'm going to take it as you're just trying to belittle people that – really could use that $1,200 yeah. because they're laid off or because they're not working or because they, for whatever reason, they need that 12, they could use right. that 1200 the, the sad part about all this stuff, man, there's, there's a handful of people that definitely could have used that way before all this happened. But the thing about it, the average Absolutely. person, like you, you already see, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy that. And then also, they're not looking on a, on a, on a macroscopic, macroscopic level, they're going to give that money out and it's going to go right back to them. 
it's gonna go right back. It's gonna go mm-hmm. right back into. Unfortunately, like you like you, when your last one, you, I get and thank you guys for saying that you were like you know shop small or whatever, support the mom and pop shops because the big guys they'll be they will be good. And not listen to your whole last podcast. They'll the, be good. The, the, Target yeah. will be fine. Walmart will Dude, be fine. Amazon will be fine. That folded. I'm uh, personally, I mean, I'm 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 in good spirits right now. But just you know, my drive back from uh, I picked up. I was in uh, Fuku. I was about five hours uh, south of here yesterday picking up a car and driving back, you know, listen to podcasts, also just thinking, looking at the scenery. And it's like, man, I, I got to line all this stuff. I got a car on the lift. I got to get to as soon as we get finished with this. I got to do, you know, my tax work, paperwork mm-hmm. is finished. And it's like, I, 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 I man, I, I, because I'm, I'm good to people and money seems to kind of come your way when you're good to people, people trust you. So I got it, you know, I got to like align mm-hmm. things and like, I'm like, Hey man, you still want, so now I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, Hey, you still want this? You still want that? Bam. I got $3,000. I went from zero 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 dollars right. in my account to three thousand dollars or whatever. So it's easy to do because people know my shit's good, and and uh, that's a, a testament of being straight. If you're a shit bag, people gonna be like, nah, fuck you, and they they're gonna they're gonna yeah, talk exactly. bad about you. If you fuck right. people so this over, time it, right? And, okay. and 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 shit will come right. back to you, even if it doesn't. Shit right. will come back to you, dude. I've seen so many people that run successful car shops, like back when I was doing the the hardcore drifting thing. And I was at every drift event in the region, not just in my state. I saw so many shops that the people that were running the shop were just dirt bags and they were make, they were doing really well. And I'm like, man, this sucks to do that. These people can be such terrible persons or terrible people. And they still make hand over yeah. fist money. But then you wait and five bam, years, one six post, years yeah. and suddenly, one what, yeah, one thing comes back to bite him because all it takes is the one person that is more powerful than the shop owner or just the one thing that even if the person's not powerful, it just goes right. viral. And suddenly that person is yeah. underwater and they can never right. recover from it. And I've seen that happen so many times. I've seen that happen enough times for me to go, you need to be, you need to treat people right. well. I, I, I'm an agnostic. I don't believe in invisible sky wizards, but I do understand that what happens, what you do to people will often come yeah. back to you. You may go 10, 15, 20 years with no repercussions, but eventually it's yeah. going to catch up. And, yeah. Anyway, no, no, that's, 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 that's very true. It's <laughs> like during these times, like I see all the small businesses, small shops. I mean, I, I hate the people got to get, get this. I, I had to get over this because people say oh, it's a small business. They don't mean your business is small because my operation is very robust. I can touch anywhere in the world. I can put cars anywhere. Yeah. So my, what I do is robust, but I am on paper. I, I'm a singular. I'm, it's just me. So I'm considered a small yeah. business. I'm not a large corporation and stuff like that, but that doesn't mean, you know, that I can't do big things. So guys are there to get over that when they say a small business they're not because i used to take the take offense to that they're not saying that you're a meaningless business it's not the case it's just your tax bracket basically and your the amount of employees you have yeah so- absolutely I, I i i used to work for a i did some i i did about nine or ten months at working at a small mm-hmm. business and they had 170 yeah. employees right. personally i still consider that a right. small business because their their net their net their net profits were under right. a certain amount their net income, even not factoring in profits, was a right. certain amount, and we only had at the most 170 mm-hmm. people. I, I currently work for a company that has 42,000 employees. <laughs> That's a big mm-hmm. business. That's not a freaking small business. You know, you look at Walmart with six digits worth yeah. of employees, hundreds of thousands of yeah, employees. And, you don't want, and the thing about it, you, you know, don't want to be in that bracket until you're ready, because that that's a big tax bracket. You owe more. So they're expecting more. So right now, yeah. that's one thing you mentioned about. Uh, uh, God damn, sorry about that. The, uh, no, that's okay. I mean, you got your your eggs are done. The uh, but the uh, <laughs> no, the, yeah, but the the uh, Japan dude, like they do again. Singular guy. I've been I the last three the last since I've been open, I've I've made at least I've made I've I've made at least before taxes roughly about eighty five to ninety k right. U.S. equivalent. Mm-hmm. So I go in there and then they they're mm-hmm. like, "This is the numbers are low." I'm like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "I make more than like this person is grilling me about my numbers." I'm like, "How much?" I told I asked the fucking lady doing my tax, like, "How much do you make?" And then she's like, she didn't want to answer the question. Like, I make fucking more than you, and you're and I, and that's not that wasn't a Japanese thing to do. And I went to get my visa, same thing. Oh, your taxes are low. I was like, "How much you make?" I make fucking look on that paper. I was like, "I you're make right. I make fucking double." triple than what you make right here at this desk 
and they they're like they're they're, gr- they're right. grilling me because I'm not. They want me to make as a gaijin fucking 250k a year. I'm like, dude, this is only the third year business. Do you know how this shit works now? And that's yeah, not I'm realistic. Like, I'm like, yeah, maybe five years. Six, well, five years from now, I'll be at those numbers, and then I'll be able to pay more. So they're grilling me about not making a certain amount. But I'm like, dude, I'm reporting number one, and I mean, I report my taxes here, <coughs> and I'm like, I'm like three and a half, four. Oh, yeah, you've got I Corona. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm, I'm about three, three to four years behind on not filing in America because it's zero. So I, I've kind of been using it as a crush because. When I enter the uh, easy form, whatever, and I put international income, it just goes to zero. So it, the whole, I do H&R right. block or whatever, it skips all the way to the end, and then I submit. So I need to go to a tax. I need to I need to make a note of this right now, taxes, because I keep saying it. Oh, the, nice. Uh, See? See, we are making yeah. breakthroughs on the yeah. Pinky Style no, TV wait, well, podcast Because all I got to do here. is I got to get with a consultant and, and report my last one. That I reported and it, and I'm like pretty much mirror that shit because I, I've been a ghost in the states for ten years now, so I don't have any. I haven't had any USD income since 2015. Um, so, um, but yeah. Anyway, I'll take care of that. Anyway, guys, so there can well, you don't file for many years. Get with a guy and he'll do a multi file and you'll do all that. You'll pay once and you'll get with a consultant on that shit. So anyway, the um, yep. but you don't want to. I don't want to let it go too far because, for example, say if they made that uh, that twelve hundred dollars because I actually because I'm showing zero. I, I actually qualify for it because I, I'm not making any other than my uh, VA stuff. You know what I mean? That's the only, right. that's the only thing I'm showing on paper. So I'm in a system. Uh, I don't really, I don't really want to ask about it because I don't want to be like, Oh yeah, you didn't fucking file for the last four years. Fuck you. Pay me type shit. You know what wow. I mean? So I don't, I don't, I'm not looking into anything. I'm not in the States, things like that. So it doesn't really respond. me. The thing about this $1,200 again is people really $1,200 dude. I mean, again, at your bracket of what you make, the amount of money y'all make per month, that is meaningless. Be, I hate to say that to people, but it, it, the reason why they're saying it has to be over, what, 75000 a year? You don't get it? Yeah. It's like, yeah, if you're, you have to be 75000 yeah. or less to get the full right. 1200 and then it's a it's an amount less all the way up to $99,000 right. a year, which I still think is – which $99,000 a year is a yeah. lot of fucking money. And I mean, if you're not – if you don't got your shit, <laughs> that amount of money you're making per year, depend, everybody's different. Everybody got different – Obligations, student loans, and all that bullshit. You yep. should have a decent grasp on finances, and like you shouldn't be living check to check. But the thing is, most people, even if even at that level, depending on student loans, are still are living check to check because they got stuff Absolutely. like that. So some people don't understand student loans the way they work. You know, you pay this much. I, fortunately for me, man, I I did three years, but I had a scholarship. So only thing I owed them when I left was my room and board and some other shit. It was like thirteen hundred dollars or whatever. So. I only did three years as well, so I didn't graduate. Then I would have been free. But the um, there's a lot of different things. Even if you're making eighty k or whatever, that that can make that 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 amount seem insignificant. You got a divorce. If you got child support, yep. uh, you know, yeah. some people don't factor. Children will yeah. suck money I was, out of I, was, I, was, I, like, what you like, I was about to say, what are you going to say after that suck? He's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. well. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, what yeah, audience yeah, do we yeah. have right now? Because uh, if they're Russian, we can talk well, about actually, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I, I got to jump right on our place, man. I, I, I restricted my – because the cursing, don't – when you when you do your videos, don't do age restriction because it, it automatically demonetizes. So, luck, I did it to oh, six no. videos, but, hey, man, they should know what they're clicking on anyway. So, whatever. The, uh, <laughs> That's but, how um, I feel. As long as you, as long as you let them know, as long as you let YouTube know, yeah, hey, we're yeah, not making says, this. No, it's a, for I say kids. no kids, so no kids should, should say that. Hey, they should know what they're doing. It, it is their parents' fault. But the um, yeah, man, with this whole this whole twelve k <laughs> doing. Japan is looking at doing a roughly two k equivalent to people. Uh, so they're gonna get two k two k to each you know uh, each person. I don't know the amount, so I could potentially double it because I'm in. <laughs> I'm still an American citizen, and. Which I'm showing nice. zero, which they probably be like, hey, we can't give you anything because you're zero. And I think they're not going to give dudes who don't do. I, I'm pretty sure welfare people are probably not going to get shit. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Because I don't know. I 
I don't want to think about it because it'll just make me upset as a yeah. libertarian. So, so <laughs> if you think about it, everybody's not getting this this twelve hundred. I mean, it, it, it's it's going to be they're not going to give this money away willingly. It's going to be you 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 qualify or you don't. There's no in between because they're not. That's a lot of money they got to they got to give out. So they're going to be hard nosed about who they give this money to. Meaning that you submit it, you submit it taxes for the previous year. You hold the job. You don't have any warrants. You don't have this. You don't have that. You're not a felon. Blah blah blah. Everybody's not getting that twelve hundred dollars, so don't don't mistake that. No, so, yeah. Guys out there, you know you you know you don't have your shit together. You owe money. You're probably not gonna get. They probably gonna take. They probably gonna take that twelve hundred dollars and apply it to what you owe, and be like, cool. Yeah, they're like, hey, you owe us three thousand, so you now you yeah, just owe which, us. I mean, that does, which is, <laughs> is now you just owe us. So they make, they're making you spend that money because when you get that money in your hand, you know when I get paid, when the customer puts money in my hand, already that money's already gone, dude. It's it's very rare. It, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. for people like you and I, it tends to be that money's yeah. gone for like I don't I don't have a shop. So the first thing I do when I get a paycheck, I go, okay, here is an amount of money. Mortgage, lights, water, gas, uh, adult <laughs> adult car note, um, because the Porsche doesn't pay for itself, insurance, gas tire you know whatever may happen especially if i'm doing motorsport stuff i start factoring out what money's going to go into the race car what money's going to go to the it's it's all but that's before i start saying okay now i can take this money and either put it into right. savings or i can put it into uh you know other things like i've got i've got business debts from drift taxi so that takes a good chunk of my current income mm -hmm. right now so it, it that like you said that money by the time that money comes in that's gone that's before we get to the stuff we right. want to buy one thing you mentioned about 45 minutes ago is that people are going to take that uh, stimulus check and they're going to go out and they, you had, you mentioned they're, they're like, I'm going to go out and buy this or I'm going to buy this. And I'm like, I personally would take that money. And if I wasn't going to take that money and pay mm -hmm. off a debt, I would take that money and say savings and just let right. it sit there. Personally. Now, I, of course, I have the kind of job where I'm still working during this time because I can work from home and I can, I am making other people rich. Right. So they don't mind paying me tons of money because I'm making them, I'm making them right. millions. So they don't care what kind of money I'm pulling in. But, and I could do that from mm -hmm. home. Um, now, my, my thoughts would probably be a little different if I was in a job that was, downsized because of the virus but to your point if i was in a job that was downsized because of the virus my thought wouldn't be i'm gonna get that 1200 dollars and go buy myself an ar-15 i would say i'm gonna take that 1200 dollars and go i'm gonna pay off exactly. a bill that, and that, so i that, don't have to worry right. about that bill for that's the next logical couple thinking months. man and like i say that that's that's the thing that's the difference between somebody who's thinking because you know if, if being a combat vet it's um and all that money I made in Iraq went directly into cars, which I got actually paid off because all those cars and events I did, it 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 led up to me getting my pro license. It led up to me, you know, not getting notoriety in Japan before I even had a shop. So it wasn't wasted yep. money. I actually it 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 been it. So I didn't take the money and go gamble it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't take that. 9k 7k 10k you didn't do, you didn't do horse racing right, right. with your money so, I didn't, so so guys like <laughs> people like that man I, i'm sorry but I, I i can't feel sorry for i don't feel sorry for anybody because everybody what you're going through is on you you know what i mean and, and, and you, you, you make, make your, your own choices. choices in life um when i go back home and people try to give me those soft they say nah dude like i'll wake up like again this i got up at four o'clock 4 a.m this morning I only got like this amount, X amount of sleep or whatever, and and I got here. I'm doing a podcast or whatever. So all those cries and whatever, and the people like, dude, you knew that you had to turn your car in for shipping four weeks ago. Don't fucking wait till you're two days out and then think you're gonna inconvenience me. Because when I tell them on the email, they're like, man, but this. I'm like, dude, you knew you had to do this before all this shit happened. Now that this is going down, this is right. not my problem. And pe my wife's like, oh, you got, you're too mean. I'm like, no, dude. That, if I did that shit, if I did that shit every time for every customer, I will be so backed up. I will be because if I if I made every customer's issue mine, I will be. That's not my. I'm, you, I'm not here to be your marriage counselor. I'm not here to be this. I'm here to service your car, turn your, get your car back to you in a, in a proper work and order, and collect money. And you would be yeah. stressed. And, I, and I'm not. No matter right. how much apathy right. you have, you would start to eventually yeah. wear that stress and, on your shoulders, right. and, and that would that, kill and you. Dude. And again, you know, you know that's not the case, man. Being a, again a single guy, single owner, run shop, 
four years in, if if you did that for eight months, it can kill people. Eight months of stressing. Absolutely. Like, so, I mean, it, it, it's uh, it, it, I wouldn't be this far if I allowed that to happen. And I don't like again, when I'm not in here. I don't answer emails like I'll, I'll look at it, but I'll answer it from my computer because I don't like responding on my phone because you're typing on a little fucking thing. And it, it's not you don't have your facility, your faculties with you. You don't have your calendar there. I was like, I'll, I'll. it's a mind. It's also a mindset right. thing. When I respond, when, whenever people email me and I respond to them on yeah. this thing, the answers I give them are. Sure. Nowhere near as well thought exactly. out as it would be if I was at exactly. my computer. You got the, I, mean, it's, I don't know what it is. You got the keyboard there in large size. You're not tight. You're not. And one thing I noticed at, at the phone, I noticed more grammatical errors on the phone because the phone it'll mm-hmm. it'll it'll auto correct or you don't see it. And all, generally, when you're on a phone, you're on a go. You're not you're not sitting at a desktop. So I'll just check it. If it's some if somebody keeps fucking mailing me on a fifth one or the fourth one, I'll say I'm on the road. I'll respond to you when I get back. Done. And, and, and unless right. I'm on the road, and I'm, I, I, I'm sleeping in the cab and then I'll, what I'll do is I'll actually will break out the laptop and I'll respond to some emails because speed is money. But at the same time, I'll, I'll put They should follow my page. I'll put, hey, I'm going to be on the road. Don't expect an email during this time. And I, this morning, four, four o'clock in right. the morning, I got Absolutely. to these guys. So anyway, the thing about it, man, it, it's um it's just the way you go about it. And again, like you, key key major point that you said, if I allowed that to happen, I'll be majorly stressed out. And I'm not I'm not going to allow anybody out there for the sake of a few bucks, stress me out, man. And then, like I said before, I tell customers straight up, when we do, and this is for my guys who do large jobs, over $5,000, I'm like, look, this is $5,000, you, do, you don't owe me. And they're like, what do you mean by that? I'm like, you don't fucking owe me. Like, I'm doing it. You don't owe yeah. me for, you don't owe me ever, no matter what amount you pay. But people that pay over five grand, they just seem like they have more, like, I can, well, at five grand, I can drop in and see what you're doing. No, you can't. You can fucking wait till I call you. And I no. told this guy, my next job coming up is roughly about seven, eight K. So he was like, I want to do a video. I'm like, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll allow you to do a video as you drop, as you drop the car off and then we'll shake hands and you'll go away. And then I'll call you. I'll call you yeah. again if I need you to put eyes on something. Other than that, you will not drop in. You will not stop by. You will not just check in and shit like that because people feel like they're paying this amount of money. They can come in. I'm like, you want to do that to, you don't go to, you know, a, a top shop. Like they, they seem they could do more with me because I'm a single guy. Like I need their money. Like yeah, your money is right. needed, but I don't. I can get. I got other customers. I can get your money exactly. from somewhere and else. When I tell them that, I'm like, and I do. When I say that to people, you should see that fucking face. Like, damn, really? <laughs> and, the, and the thing about it, that's a tax. Yes. That's a tax. All the guys who don't know when you're selling, you, you don't want to. If you seem like you're, and I picked this up from other guys' value team, and I watch those guys a lot. If you're if you seem like you're nervous for the money or you like you're desperate for it, they know they got you. And once a customer once they a customer you. knows that, they're gonna fucking dig in. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna take Dude. go ahead, go man. And that's yeah. any business. It's not just yeah. car stuff. When I was an IT consultant, one of the things that people because I was look I was shopping for a car and I was gonna buy a certain class right. of car when I was doing my IT consulting. And they said two th- they said, You wanna buy a car that's not so flashy that people feel this guy doesn't need right. my money. But you also don't want to have a car that's so low low rent that people are like, oh, this guy's going to be like whatever money I give him, right. he'll take. So I bought a very middle of the road car. It was nice enough, but it's and it's like little social cues that people don't realize that give off these big right. vibes <laughs> that people don't they don't even yeah. realize the vibes you're giving off when you show up. Like if you're a real estate agent and you show up in a Mercedes S class, people are going to be like, oh wow, they're they're mm-hmm. doing well. I don't need to be giving them you know, 20% of my, you know, or 10% right. commission, they could do well with 3% right. commission. But if you show up in a freaking beater of a car, they, you know, they'll also feel like they can give you 3% commission because you'll be scratching for every nickel and dime exactly. they can possibly take. Exactly. Um, and so to what you're, so to your point, you, you know, you can't let people, it, 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 it's, it, it's, a, it's, yeah, a it's a game it's a in a, line, in a yeah. sense where, yeah. yeah, it's a very fine line. You have to walk. Where you don't want to come across as I don't need your money, but you at the same time you let them know while it would be nice to have yeah. your money, <laughs> I can get your money from yeah. someone else. And you know, like okay, for as a perfect example, when it comes to cars, I just I just sent my Porsche Panamera off to the shop to get exhaust work and to get some train horns installed mm-hmm. on them. Any number of any number of exotic shops could have done that, but I was talking to this person and they. 
they were very responsive to me. And um, the name of the shop is Slate, uh, Slate Automotive Performance. And they did it. And they were fantastic. They even came and got the car. I tipped. Oh, I went to tip them fifty bucks, and they were like, "We don't know. We don't." I'm like, "If you don't take it, you can't leave the house." <laughs> and so I, they let me. They they allowed me to tip them both when they picked up the car and when they dropped off mm-hmm. the car. And which, first of all, that's how, that's exactly how your customers mm-hmm. should treat you. Um, if, if you're doing if if you're doing anything for them, they should feel like, "Hey, this guy's helping me out by allowing me to pay mm-hmm. for the service." But I, at no point in time did I say, oh, well, by the way, I'm giving you this car with a $100,000 window sticker, and I'm going to spend X amount of $1,000 to do this work for this little bit of work, but because it's such a high-end car, it costs more money. Um, at no point in time was I like, oh, you should let me do this, or let me do that, or let me do this. Every like even So they made a video, and I'm sh- you saw this video, Donnie. Where I, where they were like showing off the exhaust, and they like did like some highway pulls and stuff like that with the car, even even though it was my car, and they were and I was paying them to work on my car. When it came to sharing that video, I still went to the owner of the company and said, "Hey, can I share your video directly on my page? By can I? No, that's actually what says. Can I download your video right, and right, upload right. it to my page?" And the owner was like, "Absolutely, feel free." But I can almost guarantee you that if I just ripped that yeah. video off of without, his page consent, and just yeah. uploaded it without his permission, he would have been like, hey, man, I, I, I'm i not mad, but at the you same time, it's a, yeah, it's a, I would appreciate yeah. it if, yeah, if, if you yeah. just asked me. If you didn't ask me, I would have said yes. But now you're doing it without right. that. You know, without that permission, now I feel like you've slighted right. me or I feel like you're going behind my back. It doesn't matter who is, you know, there's a saying in business, treat the janitor the same way you would treat the CEO. I don't care what, if, if you're, if you're help, if you're performing a service for me and I don't care how much money I'm giving you, I never feel entitled. Mm. And more people need to realize that, like you were saying, you know, people will be like, I'm spending $8,000 on this job. So yeah. If you don't want to, if you want to do that, go to a shop that will allow right. you to do that. Try spending eight thousand dollars over at Top. I don't even know if Top Secret still a company. No, yeah, Top Secret definitely is. Try spending. <laughs> try spending eight grand over at Top Secret and see Bro, how they eight, look at eight, you. They eight, might go eight grand at Top Secret. Never, that's like a uh, spark plug, spark an hour. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, they'd be like, the, okay, the reservation fee is like five. In, but I've heard, you know, I've, in between five thousand to ten thousand dollars, based on the work you're going to get done. <laughs> so the wow. max my reservations ever go is about maybe I think 540 bucks for like mostly extensive engine builds because it, it, it's it's based on pretty much what I do the secret out there is I use the taxes so whatever the tax amount is you paid it up front to lock you mm-hmm. in it's not refundable if you cancel I keep your money so that makes people come so right. top secret other shops like that again that's what I'm saying eight grand here and the thing about it you're eight grand I'm like bro you're you're actually not the highest job I've done to let you know and then yeah. like, like really, I'm like, don't factor in my own shit because I'm like, that's totally fucking like, I mean, that like in, in case in point, what you said, I don't have the, I got a, I got the Mercedes, like the AMG, but it's not running right now because I got to change the transmission. It'll be like my whatever car, but right. what I, I've done in my shop, I, I remodeled the outside, how the outside looks because looking at my security camera, but when I first moved here, I had some of the, the crash, like the cars I'm going to restore or whatever or get parts from, they were kind of mixed in the front. So what mm-hmm. I did is I moved all those because people would come here and they would when they, they would see it looks like a junkyard because the, the cars are like, you know, some of the cars that crashed, they don't, they don't know how to race. So, and I right. didn't crash from other people. Did. So I moved all those guys towards the back. I put, I brought all the GTRs up and I, I noticed when I did this, I brought all the GTRs up from the bottom, put them up front and then when guys come in here, they're like, uh, I want to buy this. I want to buy that. And then like the total, the, 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 the response and the, the, of the people that come in here is different. So all of, you know I mean, it's just, it looks nicer. All the cars that are, that are all together, they're all up front while the ones that are in the back, you don't even, you see, you're Googling at the GTRs and the Evos before you get to the track, the crack, the crash cars. So <laughs> yeah, the crash S14 yeah. in the back. <laughs> yeah, so you'll get to those and everything and people, they'll see that. And then what it does also Number one is is keeping a, a bird's eye view on the customer cars uh, versus being out the back. And then also it is like people, when they see that come there with their, their busted ass GTR, I'm like, yeah, I got six of those. I own, I own seven yeah. myself personally. So when it, when it, so 
when they, I, I just kind of give it a second and I move on. So you're like, man, all those cars are yours. I'm like, actually, I'm like, from the silver GTR down, your customers, everything else is mine. Then they're like, oh fuck. And then they like, then it, it makes them whatever they're driving a lot with. Then I'm like, well, this car, like you know, it's about sixty grand in this car. It's about this much in that car. Not bragging about it, but just letting them know this oh, is yeah. what I do. So. Right, you, you 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 lay the foundation down. It's just like if I would have gone to Slate yeah. Performance and been like, "Oh yeah, here's my Porsche yeah. Panamera, 400 horsepower V8 Porsche," <laughs> and then the owner's like, "Yeah, you see that Murcielago? That's mine." <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd have went home. I would have just gone mm-hmm. home. I'd have been like, yeah. "All right, cool. Yeah. Well, we're done here." <laughs> yeah, man. So like, that, and that's like you don't even have to do. They'll just look around and they'll they'll assume. I mean, everybody almost assumes like that all the cars here are mine. I mean, uh, or customers, which I, I I quick to say is not because if they see that they'll be like, "Oh, this guy never gets any fucking thing done." So I'm like, "No, these are all my cars. These are all my the ones again." I'm like, "These one, two, three, four, five are customers shipping out." I've done engine work to them. I've done single turbo converters to them to make five hundred horsepower piece. Blah blah blah, just to kind of talk it up. But the uh, I'm just telling them like, "Hey, man." These are not all customer cars because I don't want you to think I'm not getting shit done because that's not how it works. When I bring your car into my shop, your car is priority for that time is in the shop, and then I move on. Like, I don't stack cars. Like, I, I don't do that. So it's just, like, the wording and everything. And then, and when I meet guys, they don't even want – like, these new dudes, man, they don't even want you to introduce yourself. They just want to drop their shit off and then, like, have issues. They just, like, want drama. So I'm like, look, man, like, let me let me explain my, my parameters – Cause I just met you. I'm like, yeah, hey, I, I say this every time I just met you. Let me talk for a second. Let me tell you what's up, what's not going to happen, what's going to happen. And after that, they, some of them never come back because they, they, what they think they're going to get is a fuck boy shop. So when they fit, when they figure oh, out they're not yeah. going to get a fuck boy shop, they like, ah, I can't, I can't pull what I want to pull, which is always, these guys always with me, they always want to co-work. I'm like, what, what fucking makes you think I co-work? Like there's, when you come to my shop, there's no people here. It's just me and you talking. You don't see a yeah. bunch of, like, there's another shop in town where it's, a bu- it's fucking, and the reason why they do that, because that shop does it, motherfuckers got cars all over the place, parts all over the floor, people running all around, when you pull up, you don't know who's working there, and it, dude, Typhoon uh, Motors, when I was in Okinawa, you go there, GIs. just turn your own yeah, wrenches, fuck that, man. no way, fuck man, that. so when people, people see that, and I, I let them, I let it be known very quickly, that's not how I run, so it's like, they get shocked, and I'm like, dude, you're a military you do militant shit supposedly all day, but why is my directives, which is a militant style, it shocks these guys because they figure they leave base and then it's supposed to be loose. And I'm like, nah, dude, I was military for six years. I spent three years in Iraq where if I make a mistake, I die and a lot of people will die. So it's just, I can't get right. that out of my system. I'm going to be militant, which is why my success, you know, not speaking on how much money I have, which, you know, I mean, is that's meaningless, but the success I've had so far is because I've stuck to those militant ways. I've been disciplined. I got up at four o'clock this morning and, and got to the shop and, and one guy canceled. You, you you saved the day for me. Well, I was going to go by myself, you know. So the thing about it, man, it's like, you know, people kind of going back when we talk about with all the stimulus shit and all that stuff. Guys want to complain and, and do stuff when they're fucking lazy. I'm like, dude, if you're lazy, you're going to get what you get, which is nothing. You know what I mean? And speaking yeah. of you, people gave you shit, but they don't know how much those cert- certifications cost. They don't know how much this stuff costs for you to do all this stuff. I don't know if you want to touch on how much you spent on certifications, study, study, <laughs> different things like that that I know about. I know about that because... Well, you know, I, will, I, I will say that for an AWS certification, it's $300 to test. You can fail yeah. once. You could fail once and retest, and they'll still accept the first $300. <laughs> If you Except. fail again, <laughs> you have to pay again. So you pay three hundred dollars whether you get the certification or not. Is what um, is, is basically what is at the end of that, and that's per certification. They don't give you like a voucher for the right. next one. It's, it's uh, like, just because try, you pass. Yeah. They're like, you know what? There, you, you go in there. Like I'm thirty. I'm thirty five this year. I'll be turning thirty six. Yeah. Um, I go in there at 35, 36 years old, and I feel good because I passed the test. They're like, yeah, well, some kid fresh out of high school just passed the <laughs> like, test as well. So. <laughs> it's like, but, yeah. But for so. you, is there a maintenance? Is there like a – I remember when A-plus was uh, was uh, was one time pro metrics you were done, but now – and it makes sense. Now yeah. you have to, I think, every two years or something like that. I haven't looked up. Do, do you have right. to research yours? A- AWS, not some – it depends. Okay, so there are people that have like cloud practitioner – and if you're a cloud practitioner, that's like the lowest level level 
Amazon Web Services certification you can possibly get. Um, they, they recommend that as your entry. So you get that, you're in the door, you're good to go. That said, um, if you go up to the higher certifications, like uh, one, one of the things I'm pursuing now that's just a really hard test, so I, I am not brave enough to take it, is the um, AWS DevOps Engineer Professional certification. It is mm -hmm. grueling. And it's and because and because the answers there is so you'll get a multiple choice an, uh, mm -hmm. question, a you know A through E for the answers. None of the answers are wrong. That's the best. What they're looking for is the answer that's most mm. right. And literally, you get you you uh, the question is a hundred questions long. You can get uh you can get twenty questions mm. incorrect. You have to get an eighty percent or more to pass the test and. And for people that are like, oh man, you get twenty questions uh, wrong. I'm like, you've never taken a hundred right. question test. Just because the, the, <laughs> yeah, the thing about it, even if you get those, like they're gonna, even if you pass, some companies like, yeah, you just barely pass, man. Fuck off. Like they, they, they can, they the yeah. company people don't realize, man, passing the test doesn't mean it just means you you've met the minimum requirement to not fail. But they yep. still factor in C's right, get degrees. So they, they still factor in <laughs> if you ace it, then they're like, oh fuck, well this guy is good, 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 good to go. Well, and, and, and even if they don't look at that, one of the things that saves me and the, one of the reasons why I am where I am is because it's not because of certifications, because like I said, there are kids coming out of high schools with AWS certifications because that's just the tracks they have now. I went, I graduated high school with an A plus and a net plus, and there were people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s that were like, oh my God, this kid has an A plus right. and a net plus. But that's just because of what was provided for me at the time. And when you're 17 years old, you absorb knowledge like mm. a sponge. So none of that stuff goes away. When you're in your 30s or in your 40s, it's harder to absorb knowledge. So those tests yeah. are harder. What gets what what gets me where I am is not because I'm sitting there with a ton of certifications. It's because I have, you know, I've been in IT for was it 2020? I've been in IT for 14 years now. I've got I don't. It's not just the cloud stuff. I've done desktop support. I've done network support. I've done you know, active directory integration. I've owned my own IT consulting company. So when companies look at that, they're like, this guy is not only going to bring the knowledge to be able to fix something, he's going to bring a level of expertise to where if he doesn't know something, he can quickly right. figure it out, one. Two, he can also provide a company that's worth billions with a level of he can provide an angle of thinking of something that even this company that's worth billions with 40,000 employees has never thought right. of before because he's seen it from the ground floor. He's not only fought the fight, he was the grunt and the right. general at right, the same right. time. So just like you, if you went to go to Top Secret and they were like, we really like this guy, they wouldn't be looking at the fact that you're a pinku style and you can fix a car. They'd be like, he's pinku style, can fix a car. And he knows how to run the logistics right. of it. Let's give this guy a bunch right. of fucking money. Yeah, that's where that's why I am where I am, and not because of some freaking you you know, well, you know like the, the the meme you'll see on Facebook sometimes. If I can fix something in thirty yeah, seconds, yeah, 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 you yeah, don't yeah, owe yeah, me. Yeah, 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 you don't owe me for the thirty seconds. You owe me for the fourteen yeah. years that went into being able to fix it. And then and also seconds. it's a skill set. Like I I pulled a story yesterday, man. I'm not again if these guys watch this, not talking bad about it. it it's um. You, you being a profession that you are, it's like you're you have the skill sets also when you work with another group of people that you don't be like, Yeah, I know every fucking thing. Like, you got you gotta, you gotta, you, you, you I think the first within the first five minutes of speaking to somebody, you could really realize you could figure out what they know and what they don't know based on what they talk about or what right. you guys talk about. If it's like you know, uh, according to like a, a group project, something like that. Uh, case in point, yesterday, like again, all the stuff I know, all the stuff I've done in my, my time, all the just stuff I've done, like. I know you're good at this and I'm good at this too. I can say a lot about myself within three to four minutes, which most people can't. They And, and if you can't do yes. that, that's a very bad thing because people are like, well, what are you worth? If you can't break out your, if you can't go through your whole, I can go through my life story in five minutes and update. And, and, yeah. And, elevator and give speech. you enough information to know who you're dealing with, what I've done. Bring just not, not, not being a bleeding heart, but I do mention again to people I deal with, I, I, you know, I, I'll bring up, you know, I spend time in Iraq because it, it's like, if they know that and you know, I'm a combat vet, they know I'm not going to deal with your bullshit. Like I'm not going to put up with it. Yeah. So I, I do bring it out. So yesterday I picked up a car from a, a, a company, a new company, and they kind of hire you on guys for by six months at a time. Uh, it, 
to get a rip visa in Japan, you gotta have a um, you gotta. It's different ways to get it. You can get one for six months, which is the, the lowest one to get, and you gotta travel out and come back. So these guys, they didn't know me, and it's kind of humbling because you know everybody, even though they drifted stuff like that, they didn't know, like they didn't know who I was except for one guy. So when I went there again, I'm, I don't be like, yeah, I'm this, this, and this. I kind of let it, you know, does this guy know me? Or does he don't? He's like, well, where are you from? I was like, oh, he doesn't know me. So I'm like, I'm up in Masawa, whatever. And then he's like, um, you know, so what do you do? I'm like, I run a car shop. And they, in their mind, they didn't really, so they probably think I work for the car shop. And I didn't I didn't feel a need to say I run Pinko Style. I'm the owner. It, it, they'll figure it out. And then plus the owner of that shop will tell them who I am. Then I'm like, oh, and the dude was like laid back and chill. So I got there to pick up a car. And I was expecting them to have a forklift, right? I have a double a double decker right. car with open floor ramps. I, to, I bought wood, so they were like, "Well, how do you want to do this?" I'm like, "I'm like, look, I'm like, I'm, at, I'm like, I told the guy, I'm at you guys' shop. How do you want to do it? This is your shop. This is not my shop." So when he when he when I said that to right. him, I'm like empowering these guys, and then he started getting to work. If I come to their shop and I'm and I'm directing shit, like um, this is my shop. Number one, I shouldn't have to do that. The the boss of the sh- shop wasn't yeah. there because. He was scheduling, scheduling conflict. I didn't even be there. So he called me on the phone, got his guys to go outside and meet me. Then a car was stacked on top of another car. And I'm like, look, man, I'm going to let these guys figure this out before I start because I know what I got to do. I bought wood planks already. I had five wood planks because my ramp is a ramp and it has an open in the middle. So I know I'm going to – the car has no wheels. It's a chassis. So I, got, I bought a dolly. So I know we're going to put the car on the dolly and everything. So I'm like, I'm going to let these guys operate. And they, what they did is like, all right, cool. All right, cool, mate. Back the, thing, back the truck up. We'll put the ramps on the bottom car because it's already trash. And then we just we slid the car mm-hmm. we slid the car down the, like a slope, down a windshield, onto the ramp, onto the dolly. Bam, done. And then we put the I put the wood planks out and the car rolled across the wood planks like some Egyptian shit. And right on, right on, right, I mean, right on to there. And they were like, dude, that was easy. I'm like, dude. And he was like, man, how'd you think to bring the boards? I'm like, I'm a logistics specialist. You know, I did that for six years in yeah. the military. I've I've told shit that was blown up in Iraq, tanks and everything. And, and then there were five dudes, five grown men just looking at me like Google eyes. Like they did. And within like three minutes, I've, I established who I am, what I do. And then like they for a solution that they were. I, I was I was I was giving them solutions without being pushy. Because, again, I could I could be like, hey, right. do this, do that. And they'd be like, who the fuck's this guy? So at this end, at the end of the thing, we all shook hands and I could tell it was a, a warm like, they were like, this guy, they didn't know if I was a dick or not. And then I was like, well, I run a shop. I've been here 11 years, blah, blah, blah. And and within that eight-minute ordeal of getting the car off the top to the truck, I talked to him through the whole time while I was working. And uh, that's like a skill set where you could be, and that's like something that's learned because maybe five years ago, I'd be like, hey, man, do this, do that. And then they'd be like, who the fuck are you, man? Like, like and then yeah. maybe one of them would have said it, it would have been a confrontation because I'm not going to back down. And we'll start fighting and stuff like that. And and uh, but then, no, I was like, hey man, I, yeah. and you'll win because yeah. you. And you're that's a again, of the I, mat. I didn't even get into I, tra- I didn't even get into <laughs> I trained martial arts. And you know, we, there was no, they were they were busy. I was I needed to load up and get on the road. So overall, the whole thing took twenty five minutes from getting. It was a car stacked on the car, no no forklift, and we got it onto a double decker truck on the bottom ramp with an open floor middle, which means you know the dolly's gonna roll in the center. And it's just like, um, yep. again, man, it's just tacticals and the way you deal with people. But then sometimes, again, if, if, it, if it went maybe another minute before they decide, I'm like, hey, we're going to do this. And this, the fucking GI militant shit would have kicked off of me. Then, then I would have been directed <laughs> shit. And because I'm, again, I'm not going to, like I said before, I'm not going to come into their domain and then start running shit because they'll be, they'll, it, it'll, it'll look yep. bad on me because they don't know me. And, but at the same time, I was giving the guy hints that I can take over if you want, but, if you guys figure this out, yeah, uh, yeah, but I right. don't and then want they, to. Like little shit, like they we got the car on a ramp, right? And they they all I, I I let them all kind of struggle and pick the car up. I picked the whole fucking car, car up by myself in the front, and I was like, push the dolly on there for me, please. Jesus. And he's like, they were like, they were like, oh man, this. Then like, so it went from that right that, that right there was a display. I guess I did it. I I didn't do it on purpose, but it was like a display of strength. And when a dude looked at me. First, he was kind of looking down. He was kind of talking down to me because he's like, the guy was probably like 6'2". So I, I had to look up at him a little bit because he was a little bit taller than me. So it was, you know, the ma- the mm-hmm. masculine, you know, lines meet each other and they fucking, they're, they're all, they're, they're males, but they're trying to see who's more dominant. So a little bit, a little bit of that was going on. I'm like, well, I'm a business owner, so I'm more above you anyway. It, not, not trying to be a dick, but it's the truth. And. Yeah, no, and then when he's yeah. when he asking me how do you want to do this, I'm like, I, when he said that, that mean right there to me that 
you're not a leader because a leader doesn't ask another leader how are we going to yeah. do this. You're going to tell me I'm coming into your domain, into your shop. You're going to tell me how you're going to get it done. Not I shouldn't come five hours away from my operation to 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 tell to ask you know how this shit's going to be done. So again, it's like being assertive and things like that, and it's different skill sets, and you learn it as you go along. And you got to deal with everybody differently. So, again, overall, what I'm saying is the, prop, the operation was successful. I got the car in under eight minutes on a, on a trailer with no forklift. Um, we we all shook hands. We, they were like, you know, they were all like, hey, man, will you come down here? So, at the end, everybody was happy. It wasn't like the standoff guy. They were like, hey, man, will you come down? We got parts for you. We got this. We got that. So, it was it was a good transaction all the way around. So, you know. And, yeah. yeah. Sounds like But it. the thing about it. People don't realize those skills, man. It's, it's, it's skills that are you you don't really you don't know you don't you, you do them so naturally you don't realize that's a skill. And for the military, what I right. picked up is not assuming what people know as a trainer. I was a trainer, and I know you've been around trainers too that assume everybody is a fucking dumbass, and they train down. So when I talk to yeah. my guys, my troops, I'm like, hey, we drop we about to we about to drive a tractor trailer. Who who here has experience before? And they were like, hey, I do, I do, I do. So I would say all the guys that don't have experience, you come forward. The guys who drove driven before, you stand back because this is the shit I'm going to say is meaningless. You know how air brakes work. You know how to buzzer work. You know how to do an air brake test. You know how to do this. These new guys don't know how to do that. So a lot of people don't, they don't really, they just assume everybody's fucking stupid. And everybody likes to get, everybody likes right. to get in their communities and say everybody and talk about how stupid other people are. I try to, to not do that, but at the same time, I do realize that some people are more skillful than others and everything. So I wouldn't come into your uh, your group of friends with my little bit of knowledge, which is more than a- the average person, and start talking about you know networking shit because I'll look fucking stupid within two minutes because that's not that's not my <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah. I don't know. I, I work I work with yeah, some interesting yeah, yeah. characters, so <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. I will say that yeah. on that note, when it comes to that um, military mindset, there are certain things that even at my level within the company, which is nowhere near the top, like I don't, I would say I'm on the lower half of the middle. And um, even at that point, I tend to do that, do the whole take charge thing as a perfect example. And I won't give details because yeah, it's, yeah. you know, it's com- company right. information. Um the, the, we're working on getting disaster recovery for a particular aspect of the job. And we keep having these meetings. We kept having these meetings about various aspects of it. And it came to a point where I was like, I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and take charge of this. No more meetings. I'm going to go ahead. I will, any meetings we need, I'll, I'll arrange. I'm going to start reaching out to companies. I'm going to start getting the information we need put together. I'm going to put this together And then we can start dissecting it from there because right now we've had three meetings and nothing has been done. We just keep having meetings and then we go to the next meeting, we go to the next meeting. I'm okay with that if we're just planning and just kind of jaw jacking. But if you, we have a deadline, you guys have given me a date that you want this done by. And if that can't be accomplished with us having meetings and we keep walking away going, what do they want me to do? It's pointless. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to either – so, and then what winds up happening is people go, oh, okay, well, well, you're doing all of this. Is there anything you'd like me to do? Yeah. Can you do <laughs> X, Y, Z? They'll go out. They'll do yeah. X, Y, Z, bring it back to you, and you're like, right. thank you. Then you go to the next person. You say, hey, can you do ABC? And they go, oh, yeah, yeah. I could do ABC. And they just – because you're – instead of saying here's the entire alphabet, right. solve it. <laughs> you're saying here's three solve letters. X. Here's A, B, and C. Yeah. Do this. And they go, they, they, so you have 15 people that run out and they, they each do three letters and you come back and you have this entire alphabet and you're like, okay, cool. That's all done. Let me compile this information, put it together, make it presentable. I'm going to present this to my director or my vice president. And I'm going to say, okay, here you go. Here's everything. The, the, this person, these people, these people put all of this information together. I compiled it into one pretty list. Let me know right. what you think. And then it usually comes together like, oh, oh yeah, great yeah. leadership. The thing about yeah, I know because I've right, had the to thing do about this. It, even, like you said, in the military, and that's one of the skill you notice is the biggest thing about the military is everybody positions themselves not to get not to take the blame for an operations fucks up. And that, that, that's the biggest <laughs> that, everybody, if you don't know what the hell the military works out there, listeners and viewers, the military is all about who they didn't fuck up because the military is as well old as it looks on the outside. 
the military runs on fuck ups. Like they, I mean, you get you get fired, you get fired, so quote terrible. unquote, but you just move to another section and yep. fuck that section up until if it gets that bad, then you they look at getting you kicked out. But generally, when you get fired in the military, you just move to another section and they put somebody else there. Yep. So the um a lot of the, and, and that's even with that the, the your situation that you explained, my one I just got finished talking about, people like those guys they like. But they don't want to. They don't want to be responsible for the car falling off the top and then breaking, and them having to tell their boss they fucked up. So that's why they be like, that's why that guy hit me with that. Hey man, how do you want to do this? I'm like, you know, you should be telling me how to do it. This is your yard again. Yeah. So those guys right there, they don't want to. Um, those people you work with, they don't want to be responsible for when it fucks up because they want to point the blame at somebody. You took over, so what's going to happen? Right. And Dave said, do this. Dave told me to do A B C A B E. Not ABD or AB, whatever the fuck. So CB, CBD, right, whatever. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they, they yeah. <laughs> so Dave, you caught that the CBD. <laughs> so yeah, so Dave, uh, so Dave was the guy. So Dave's gonna be the one that be standing in front of the, the guy answering why the team fucked up. And that's in the in the world, yep. man. It's like you know, you're doing your thing from home. You 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 have your responsibility and everything. Everybody can't do that. So. They not gonna pay somebody that's gonna be home fucking off and then get into the work and stuff like that. And people do it and they fuck up and they get fired. Um, and some yeah. most people out there, the average person out there, doesn't want to be responsible for it. Like I mean, you were saying too, man. You were like, um, we we talked about before about ben, well, I'm not talking down to people who don't own businesses, but the um, you were like, man, I'm 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 happy with my company. I make enough money. I I got this and that. I'm fine with what I do. And so there's a lot of guys out there that work for other people that actually make currently more money than me you know i do profit all my profits but there's guys out there that work for companies that again make more money than i make currently so it's not saying that i'm there yep. that i'm better than them because i am my own boss but there's, a, there's there's perks with everything when you work for your company you don't have to worry about your company's taxes and things like that you know what i mean so there's different things right. different yes, levels true. different things so you worry about yourself right, basically so the pair of apples and oranges and stuff like that is meaningless uh, but at this time right now, man, like, you know, right now, I'm, I'm happy that your company's still rolling. You guys still doing your thing. Because right now, again, with this, uh, we, again, I got my notes here for the whole, the, the COVID shit, but I, you know, <laughs> like touching on that. But the, a lot of people are getting fired right now. A lot of people are getting laid off. A lot of, a lot of businesses have gone fully within two weeks, man. That means that they were banking on the people to come there. I've lost potential dollars roughly right now, estimated about 18K uh, since everything kicked off. And, um, you know, so I made a way, though. I didn't bank on that because it, even though that's potential money, it's not physical money. So I only worry, I only worry about right. the jobs that I'm actually doing. And that's why, again, I, I'm like, hey, I'll get back to you when I finish this engine build. Your request is not important because that request, you're talking about three months from now. I'm working for now, man. I, I right. can't. Yeah. Or, or it's yeah. potential. Like when, like when I was talking to Slate and when I was talking about my Porsche, they were excited to do the work because they've worked on the Porsches. They were like, well, we love the way they sound. We like the way they drive. We like this. But until I said, until I set a date and I said, yes, come get my car. Or I said, hey, I'm going to drop the car off on this date. They just treated me like another tire kicker. And I respect that because that's how you have to be. You can't sit there and place all your ducks yeah. in however yeah. much money I'm going to pay. Because I'm at the last possible second, I might say, "Oh, I found a better deal somewhere else," or oh, "I'm going to go with someone else," or "No, and, and, you know what? Never mind." What you, what you explained right there has happened to me multiple times, and it's when you first start, you take you take it you take it you take offense to it, but they're good. They they sound like I mean, from what you explained to me again, it, it, it's small keywords from that company. I can see as a well as a the the boss the well the company owner is is a logistical logical person. And that's how you deal with it. If you if you take everybody that comes to that door and they're they're the next guy, I'm like, dude, you got you got a car on your lift that's going to pay you three k when you finish. Finish that, like yeah. take the fucking sticky note. And that's what I do, man. When they come here, I used to run them off, but now when they come, I'll I'll see them. I see the cameras. I'll have my sticky pad. Hey, write your email down. Write your phone number down. Give them about three minutes, and then hey, I gotta go, I gotta get to this. That way, because before I would tell them to fuck off, like completely. And that, that was like, man, that's potential money. So now what I'm doing, every time I interact with somebody, what I'm doing is I'm either making money from it or I'm directing them to a partner that I work with. And I, I'm not, I'm recommending to people that I work with. I'm not going to – people come here, oh, do you recommend you in other shops? I tell them no because why the fuck would I recommend you to my competition when we're not partners? You know what I mean? Right. So when they say, like, you, like, you don't know anybody else? Like, no, nah, I don't. I can't, re I can't put my name out there and recommend to you to anybody because I don't know. Yeah. 
Because yeah. if they fuck your shit up, exactly. then it's on me. It comes back. It, 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 <laughs> dude, everything I do, man, is is uh, I told one customer, man, um, I ordered some parts from recently off of Yahoo. Um, I uh, he I told him Yahoo. First of all, is a, you order and it's like it, it's it's a risk there. And I was like, you know, from that, I was like, you know, going from that point on, man, I won't, if I don't install it, I don't order, I don't search for anything because when you search for it, they want to do that. They want to, the customer wants you to search for it because if you order the wrong part, then it's on you. So no, I make them search for it, provide me the link, how much it costs. I pay for it. It comes and we're done. And, uh, when yep. you, when you, when you make it like you're the a liability, I'm like, dude, I, I got, I'm liable for a lot of shit. I'm not going to be liable for any more than I have to be liable for that's just straight up and down. When the, one guy actually leave his car here for a extended period of time, I'm like, no, you will bring it back in two weeks. Because if I have your car here for two weeks and a fucking tree falls on it, I'm liable for it. You know what I mean? So that yep. all the cars that are here, they're un, they're covered. They're under insurance. They are they're here on storage and everything. So I, I'm I got liability for it. But the thing about it, man, again, people don't realize when they talk to me when I get pissed off quickly and they see it in my face and my voice, uh, it's because they I'm thinking about I'm thinking about future uh situations and they're they're thinking about now and their car and everything and i'm like look man yep. you're going to create fucking issues for me i don't want to work on your car and then when i tell them that they're like oh man I, you know, like no dude you're you're being a fucking asshole you think you're going to walk in here and flash 150 bucks around and think it's going to make me you know change but it doesn't work that way and it, it's just i guess the general right. nature of people how they want to do things and right now again i, I want to use, use that as a segue because i got i actually got about how, how's your time looking man um, I, it's, uh, 1900 mm-hmm. right now. I could probably do another that 30, perfect, 45 I, minutes. I got, uh, I'm not going to leave this time because I'm, they, 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 they say they're going to start at 830. They're, they're setting up. I got my cameras here. Some, the owner of the shop is, uh, case in point, man, how shit goes. You guys know I got a new shop. The owner actually has a Ferrari and some other shit. He's a, he's a baller. Um, so he wants to put a wall like, cause the contract was, I'll get the the main bay, and then he wants to keep the garage, the the big part. You see the Abrif down there that I showed sometimes. Um, he's bringing he yep. bought a Ferrari of some type. I don't know what type it is. My wife was all gooey. I was like, I don't get, I don't care about. It. It's not mine. I'm not racing it. So he's bringing a Ferrari here. So he wants to put a wall between. Uh, I'll you know, buy a Ferrari and let you to, drive it. He wants to Just put a wall between. He he's pretty much you know taking that. So it, it is what it is. I still got shit tons of space. I'm paying whatever I pay per month, which is well below what guys pay in Tokyo. So you can't, you know, when you're renting, yep. you can't, you, it's the give and take. I, I was mad. I blew up at him. But then after thinking about it, I'm like, man, this dude did give me all the space for this much money. And he did, he did say he wanted the space, but he didn't see the terms. So it was like, you know what, man, I, I still got all the space. Uh, he's going to take that part of the garage, which I would like to have, but it, it is whatever. Him building a wall there is actually cool because it does put a little bit of separation. But it's just the own. It's just me and one other guy though. It's not me. It's the owner, the landowner. So the, uh, in a nutshell, he's right. parking his Abrif, which is a forty-five thousand dollar car here in Japan. He's parking that in his whole garage in the corner. Uh, so when I got here, I got the main. So I could fit five cars, six cars inside of my shop, and they're not on top of each other. So I can't complain about that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I was mad about yeah. it. I went home and thought about it and. I, I didn't really apologize to him because what he did was wrong. He kind of changed his shit on the fly, and uh, and I and I gotcha. got one with a translator. So he so that shouting match between me it was one way, and he knew I was fucking angry. It he garnered a different respect for me because he knew I wasn't a pushover. So uh, body language is body language. You don't got you don't have speak language. It's body language. So he knew right. I was fucking angry, and he apologized for what he did, and he wasn't clear with what he stated. And this is a guy who, who apparently he has a Ferrari and all this other shit. He's a business owner as well. He makes a lot of money. So uh, he could have told me to mm-hmm. get, get the fuck out. You know what I mean? Pretty much after that conversation, I was prepared for that because I was like, look, I didn't leave my last shop, come here and to deal with the same shit again. He was, he was a nice guy. And I'm like, you know, everybody's nice in the first, you know, three, four, five weeks. And then you start to see who they really are. <laughs> and actually, he's a, yeah, the he's, true he's colors. A nice guy. He, now, you know, this guy makes way more money than I make right now. But he now asks my wife, hey, is it okay if I build this wall? I'm like, hey, it's your, you know, this is, I'm renting this space. But the fact that he asked me, it, it's a, uh, uh, it means, that a, means lot. a lot. He could just be like, I'm going to build this wall. Fuck off. Now, now he's coordinating with me, my time. That's why I'm looking at the construction workers on my camera. They showed up early, the good construction workers. So he's going to come at 830. But anyway, the, uh, the, uh, anyway. 
moving along, man. It's just little little things, man. Again, I'm not I'm not a perfect person. I don't want it. You guys are there watching. Like this guy talks like he has everything in order. I'm like, no, I don't have all your shit in order, but I got all my shit in order. So, <laughs> so. Uh, I, I, yeah. The way I explain it to people is um because they're like man it sounds like you've got everything together nope I've got my life you're together shit, you got, I'm doing okay my, I, I live yeah. comfortably my bills are paid I've got money yeah. in the bank I'm yeah. comfortable however I do not have my shit I'm sorry I I know you got yeah. you sound like you got your shit together well, I, mean, I do no, no, not no, no. have my what shit I'm, together I mean, there's there's always for me there's right. always the next step there's always something that I need to improve because I. I'm 35, like I've mentioned a million right. times already, but I still there are still a lot of things that I did when I was 25 that I haven't grown right. out of, and I need to grow <laughs> out of those. And it, you don't know what they are until some, and usually it's my my girlfriend will say, "How come you do this like that?" And I'll get huffy and puffy and all upset and all offended. But then, like like you said, I'll go home and I'll I'll go back to my my corner and I'll think about it for a second. I'll go, she's right. right. I, I I'm 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 acting like I'm still 24. I'm I'm almost I'm near as makes no difference yeah. forty. Yeah, <laughs> I should have this shit together by now, and then that's when I kind of go, all right, well, let me look at this. Let me let me stop if it's spending money a certain way. Let me stop. Let me let me th- think more clearly before spending money this way. Or if it's re- responding to a certain type of stimulus a certain way, oh, let me not blow up at people, or let me not just be so quick to do this or the other, or you know, little things that. As you, you know, once the finances are out of the picture, like you mentioned earlier on, money doesn't solve your problems. It just takes some right. of those away. So it, and it allows you to think about other things and it allows you to focus on other things. So I start focusing on things that make me seem more adult <laughs> and not like a kid because I nothing offends me more. There, it, it takes a lot to offend me, but two things will offend me immediately. Insulting my intelligence and belittling where I am. So nothing make, So it makes me feel like a piece of crap when somebody looks at me like a kid, but it makes me feel even worse when I realize that someone's looking at me like I'm a child because of the actions that I right. did. I'm doing a certain thing that I feel, oh, I'm fully justified in this, but then like you start speaking to people that are your friends because your friends are going to tell you like it is. Your real friends, your, the people that are just trying to suck up to you, they're going to be like, oh, no, you're absolutely correct. Right. You're absolutely right. But your actual friends, the ones that don't give a shit whether yeah. you like them at the end of the day because they know you love them, they're like, you're not going anywhere, motherfucker. I'm going to tell you what the fuck yeah. you just did. Well, those, those, <laughs> oh those friends will sit there and be like, well, you actually did this. That makes you seem like yeah. a 12-year-old. And you go, oh, yeah. well, now my feelings yeah. hurt. And they're like, okay, well, go be mad. <laughs> Come back to me next week when you're not mad yeah. at me anymore. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's part of growth, man. And the thing about it, man, you know, where we are, you know, 30, you're 35. I just turned 37 like 48 hours ago. And, I, you know, I don't put all the whole happy birthday shit online. It was whatever. But, yeah, because I would I would yeah, blow up your yeah. shit. I would be all up in your freaking page. I mean, page. people did eventually, but it was like a day after or whatever. But the 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 uh, you know, yep. it, it's this is growing pains. Is knowing yourself, knowing what you want to do, and everything. And the thing about it, man, everybody, it, it's people. I hate people who act like they're perfect, perfect, man. Like because everybody, everybody, like everybody has something with them. For me, generally, the things that I don't like other people doing, I don't do myself. For example, I don't. Uh, just like chewing food, man. I, I hate, I hate, I'm like one of those people who I hate to hear the sound of somebody slurping or smacking. I'm in Japan, so that's one of the worst places. Yeah. I was like, you're in Japan. That's yeah, going to be told, tough. I told my wife, like, hey, when we go to the States, you do not slurp your noodles and shit like that when we do that. So the, uh, so it, it's, it's, a. Uh, I just kind of like whatever I don't like people, I don't like people to do to me, I don't do. But it's like, you know, certain things for me, man, it's just like some people I can tell don't like my, um, they don't like when they first come here to my shop. And again, I, like I said, I introduce myself. Like I let them know, like, hey, man, this is what you're about to deal with. That way, you know, if you want to deal with me or not, not like we get in the bed and everything and you get your car here. Then you find out how I am. Like, I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going right. to let you know straight at the top. I'm not. I, I tell them, like, look, I'm, I don't deal with bullshit. And I, I, I look everybody in the eyes and I meet them and I tell them this. And they're like, man, and they like, man, what the fuck? This guy is about to like punch me in the face. Like, no, dude, I just. <laughs> whatever you whatever you come in here with, you seem like a nice guy. I shook your hand. Uh, probably won't be doing too much handshaking for a little bit. But the uh, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no, that right now. Like <laughs> I know, everybody's doing fist bumps and short and elbow bumps now. Yeah, the yeah. elbow bump, man. It's all about the elbow bump right now. Get your fucking disease like, ass hand away from me. Shoulder bumps too close <laughs> to the mouth and everything. But the uh, 
Yeah. That's too close. We yeah. might as well kiss. <laughs> with the uh, but yeah, man, just let people know who you are right away. Versus ver- my key out there to anybody, just I guess picking up what I'm trying to say is let people know how the fuck you are. And this goes for men to men, uh, what, like man to woman. If you're dating out there, don't fucking tell this chick that you're gonna be there for her and be on Netflix when you really built race cars. And then four weeks after you start banging her, then she goes to come to your house and you're in the garage with the boys. And she thought it was going to be all about her. Like, you <laughs> fucking lied to her. And that's what me, when I date people, exactly. I let them know, hey, I build cars. I raise cars. You cool with that? And that's why you see these these relationships uh, where men are so unhappy because the woman made them sell their yeah. race car. Because when that, when that man met that woman he at first, say. they were like, oh, baby, yeah. you're everything in my car. It's just nah, a car. Yeah. I don't care. Okay, now we have a yeah. baby. You need to sell that race car. One of the reasons I, I I truly believe that one of the reasons why Maddie and I have been in a relationship for so long, even through thick and thin, we've we've had our arguments, we've had our little fights and yeah. battles. That shit happens. Where no one, you, you're that's gonna happen in a relationship. You're gonna you're gonna have arguments. You're gonna have disagreements. But what one of the things that was set early on is I said, hey, whatever car I am admiring at the time, whatever car I have, and Donnie knows I've been through a million cars. Whatever car I have at the time, that's my that's my first love. That's gonna be my boo. You're the side chick. Yeah. <laughs> you are the side chick to the car. When I have my car, I mean, there are gonna be times when I'm giving you a lot more attention because it's winter and I can't drive as much, or I'm not doing as many <laughs> motorsports events, or whatever yeah. may have you. But when I'm in the, when I, when my head's in the game and I'm in car mode, just just accept that I'm in car yeah. mode. For however long, because that's going to be how it is probably until the first snowfall. Yeah. It, it's true, man. This has been like you guys uh, again. I, 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 I like. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to meet Maddie in person. I haven't met her. I just she seems. I mean, just by watching your your guys' podcast, she seems like a, a she does. She seems like she has a, a good sense of humor, but she's also no nonsense type person as well. Yeah. So yeah. she's she's very Scottish yeah. in that regard. She does like, you know, there are certain women that will play around and they'll go along with something as long as they feel that they'll be able to get something mm-hmm. from it. Maddie is not manipulative whatsoever, but in that she's very to the point. She's very straightforward. Look, this is how it is. And this is how it's going to be. Can you yeah. deal? Can you deal yeah, with that? It, no. It's, it's okay. Amazing. Bye. It's amazing. That she's <laughs> lasted this long with you though, man. Cause you're, you're like you're getting you're just a jo- jovial <laughs> type of I don't know if that's the right word to use but you're like yeah I'm jovial I, I'm goofy yeah but you're you're like that type <laughs> of guy man where like you don't know when Dave's serious or when Dave like Dave's always in a good mood generally until like you see I, I never really I, I haven't I haven't seen you angry before uh, we just we've always been like we've been we met in person we talk on a podcast is always like good good mm-hmm. you know good vibes so that's a good thing I mean I'm not looking to see people angry most people. I hide yeah. it well. My depression stays under a bottle yeah. of alcohol. Most guys never, um, <laughs> like some of my Japanese uh, friends, like I'm, they never see me like angry as well. And when they do, they they around, they're like fucking shocked because it's like it goes from being like this to fucking like very, like very, very angry, man. Like yeah, yeah zero to a hundred. And then I, I told you before, I had a, a situation where I went from, I I, I kind of I was. I was pre agitated by the guy before he came here, and then I, I was I was like, man, this guy's gonna set me off. Within three minutes, he says something. Hey, man, you mind if I take a picture? I'm like, I'm gonna fucking take the pictures. I, I'm gonna take the pictures of your car. <laughs> so I was already irritated. I'm like, look, man, before it just it, that, that one trigger because I was I was prepared for it. That's probably the worst thing to do is be pre prepared for altercation with a customer, but I was. And then, and then yeah. something that is not yeah. even really to the level where you yeah. thought it's just like 1% it's like, it's like, of what you were thinking. I'm going to take a I'll fucking tell you. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, yeah. And they're like, no, oh, I just want to take Get the fuck out of my shop. <laughs> yeah, dude. So... Yo, so that pretty much happened, dude, because he, he was, like, trying to take control before I can even, like, get fucking hello out. I'm like, no, dude, you're not. So yeah. anyway, he's probably, he's definitely not watching this because he's not. They're, they're like, you were psyching yourself up yeah. in the shower. So he said that. And he was just like, I'm ready. So, yeah, man, that's what. <laughs> so, so that happened, man. So anyway, I'm like, dude, I'll take the pictures. I'll, I'll do all that stuff. You can take your pictures if you want with your phone, but I'm going to take DSLR pictures, all the stuff or whatever. And um, and then it, it, we had a we had and the, the risk, risk this particular customer we had a pat we had a, a previous engagement before my company, 
And then he kind of slandered my name a little bit. I met with him in person. He said he didn't say that, of course. And I was like, hey, before we, before we get to this business, like you said this X, Y, and Z. And he's like, no, it wasn't that. I'm like, all right, so whatever. We moved on. So we already had like kind of a bad run in. And then we uh, so I do. I, I, I for five minutes, I was I was it was a one way shouting match. And he wasn't really the thing about it. While I was screaming at him, he wasn't really screaming back at me because I could see in his eyes. He was like, fuck, man, I'm in it. I can't I'm not going to run away. But <laughs> the situation is like I, if I wanted to like physically do something, it, there would be no stopping me. So his eyes were like, fuck. And then, it, and something about when I looked in, I was looking in his eyes while I was screaming at him. I was, I just, I instantly stopped. I stopped screaming and went to a normal mode. Like I was talking normal. This motherfucker was like, "Bro, this motherfucker's crazy," because I went from like, I, I wasn't screaming like spinning. I was, I was talking in an elevated voice, very elevated and right. very aggressive. And then I'm like, and while I'm, while I'm talking to this guy, I'm thinking like, man, this this dude is like, he he was. I've, I've nullified what he was trying to do. So I can kind of go back to normal mode. Mm-hmm. And I did, right? I was like, I went from very, 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 very talking to like, yeah, man. So, you know, hey, man, it just happened sometimes like that. And then that was, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> dude, he was like, what the it, fuck? People don't think it'd be yeah. like it is, yeah. but it do. <laughs> so it went like, I mean, the, the whole, and the rest of the conversation was normal as fuck, like monotone almost. And I, I could tell he was like, the wow. whole time he's like, dude, I got to leave before this dude like snaps again. Or whatever. And anyway, he, he's a cool guy. He's just he, he he the car he was dropping off was a very nice car. He was very protective over the car. And I'm like, look, man, I got this. Look around. I got this, man. Like, and what that time I had a bunch of crash cars outside, so it really wasn't a good vibe for him. Uh, and, and my other cars right. were running and everything. But again, man, it, it's just uh, some guys, man, out there they just different. So I, I've learned. Um, even when a customer come, if, I, if I'm dealing with a bad email, what I'll do is I'll just like breathe in real, he- breathe in, uh, taking a lot of air, breathe out. And it's kind of, yeah. this, this, I can't let, and I've done it before where I let the energy of a last customer pass off to another customer who's kind of in the same bucket of being a dickhead. And uh, one guy I, I talked to, he never came back. This motherfucker came to my shop, man. Came to my shop. He said, like, hey man, like he jumped out, he jumped out of his car, barely puts in a fucking e-brake. And his car is like still rolling forward as he getting out. He was so, hey man, I sent you an email. I'm like, oh my, like, who the fuck? I'm like, dude, dude, I was already mad. I was like, I'm like, who the fuck are you talking to, man? And he, I was, like, I was dude, mad yeah. before he even opened so, his so mouth. I, I, said, I was like, I was like, dude, I was like, who the fuck are you talking to, man? And then that all right, that that right that that response from me to him, he he backed um, off. So the energy that he, so yeah, he's, he did. he's probably driving over there missing gears. Like, yeah, I'm gonna tell this motherfucker when I get there. Tell his mother. And then he saw you, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, this yeah, yeah. is this dude is seventeen foot No, no, he, he's done with me before, but he was like a little a Cuban, like oh, a Cuban, okay, never mind, man. Cuban, <laughs> Ecuadorian, those dudes or whatever. So I'm like, man, who the fuck are you talking to, man? Like, you don't. I'm like, you don't come dude. here telling me you send me email. I'm like, you send me email when he pulls out. His, I'm like, I hate this shit, man. You're, you're talking to me face to face. You pull out your fucking phone and and, and pull up an email. I'm like, dude, you talking to me? What the fuck was the email about? So he pulls out his yeah. phone and then and then all his bolster shit. He's like, man, I sent your email. I'm like, dude, I'm like, if I did, if I respond to the email, then I didn't get it. I didn't see it yet. So I was like, I'll check it when I get a chance. And I'm like, I was like, well, what is your email? He's like, I emailed Don on that pink. I'm like, let me see your phone. Actually, since you're pulling it out, it was D O N L D. Like, there's no, where's the A at? Oh man, my bad. So, Don, Don so that email did. never got to anybody ever in history, to nobody. So I'm like, so so you so you come here and saying you sent me an email with the wrong fucking name. That's not my name. It's D O N L D at Pingostar.com. So I'm like, so the, and after that, he had no so he pretty much he turned he was like, oh man, well I was just trying to get this done. Never seen that guy again. Never heard from him again. Never yeah. nothing. Well, because yeah, because you called yeah. him out and he, he had yeah. nothing. And the thing is, I got dude, I know, I mean, I'll, I'll check my stuff, man. I am pretty spot on because again, I work by myself. I have to check myself. So I'll go back now and when I send an email out, I'll make sure you know sometimes you send an email, you just move on. Sometimes some emails if you send right. a bunch of an SM SMTP or SM whatever server, it kind of it it drops mm-hmm. them or so I noticed some emails uh, maybe every one out two out of the le- two out of 40, which is not good to me. I'm I'm going to rectify that situation. Maybe two or three out of 40 emails right. will get dropped and it'll go to the un- it'll go to the outbox but it'll it won't send until I press uh send and re- send and receive. 
And then it'll go out. Some of them will never go because they mark the emails as spam or whatever. I'll, I'll talk to you offline about that. Maybe you can help me with that situation. But the um, the uh, right, when I right, send about right. 40, e- well, maybe 25 emails in a row, the same traffic, it starts to mark those as spam. I don't know why it does that. But the um, anyway, so I check my emails and everything. Guys send emails. And I just my thing, man, is when I, I, I got to tell customers, look, man, I don't fucking require you to be on my back to get shit done. I was getting shit done before you were born, honestly. And I was getting stuff done before you got in the cars and everything. So when guys, like again, like you said, belittling your intelligence, you're just automatically assuming because mm-hmm. I, I, maybe it's a race thing that black guys are not prompt on their shit. Like, hey, I have nothing to do with Leroy. My name's Donald. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Leroy, Leroy Jenkins is not, not family of mine. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it is what it is, man. I hate I hate to fucking talk about my company like that and business and stuff. But, hey, man, I want to wrap this up on the um, – on the COVID shit. So you were asking about the, uh, the, uh, what was your question about the, you know, the Japanese to, uh, well, okay. So what, what, what they're telling us here, basically looking at numbers is that, um, wow, please don't die. Is that, um, (laughs) the numbers are significantly lower in Japan right now than they are in America. Now I am taking into account that we have a much larger population in America than they do in Japan. Um, but, I thought I I was under the impression that it's probably because they're not as touchy feely in uh, Americans. We're very touchy feely. We love shaking hands and bro right. hugs and kissing yeah. motherfuckers and shit. And I, I just don't see that. Well, at least like, the little bit of time I spent in Japan, party, I didn't see a lot they, of that. They, uh, they, yeah, they, uh, exactly. They, they're not touchy feely, and like you said, because you've been here, but they are close proximity. They are close. So, okay. so right now, I actually got I got my little my yellow sticky note with stuff on it. So right now, this is as of March twenty sixth. This is from uh, NHK NHK website, which everybody knows NHK is like CBS, um, in Japan. So as of March twenty sixth, my birthday. Uh, I'm not gonna say that again. So as of March twenty sixth, at this is fourteen hundred. <laughs> so I, I, I've still got key points. So. In I'm in Amori. Uh, Amori is like the prefecture, and the prefecture is like you know your it's like the the category then, then the subcategory and you know all that shit so I'm in Masawa I'm in Amori but yeah. Amori as a whole there's six cases confirmed in all of Amori so that's Amori's if you look at the size of Amori it's probably like I mean if you, it's like kind of uh, how to put it for the guys in the states it's probably like the size of like two Texases two Texases yeah two mm. Texases so it's like two Texases <laughs> sound gay <laughs> shit but yeah <laughs> Amori is the size, is the size of like, well, maybe uh, I would say one and a half Texas, and uh, so there's only six cases here. There's 259. The, the largest number in all of Japan is Tokyo, of course, because everybody goes mm-hmm. there. So it's 259 cases in Tokyo. There's a total overall of 1,292 cases in Japan, and there's been 45 confirmed death, deaths deaths as a result of that, and that's that's it. That that's that's the numbers. But before the Olympics were canceled, which were canceled like three or four days ago, they were saying it was like twelve cases overall. Then right after the Olympics got canceled, mm. all these numbers bam because Japan they were trying to hide it. They were trying to hide it to keep the Olympics going. Then somebody was like, dude, we we can't have all these people from all these different countries come over here in in four weeks, and, and uh, well not four weeks, but uh, I don't know, some a like couple months. They can't have all these people come over here, and, and they're like, no, we, we're going to cancel it. So I think this is the first time that I've known of the Olympics being canceled to, to, to next year. So they, they can't, right. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's, well, and that's what I was getting at, because, like, I look at the, uh, the, the, the according to the uh, John Hopkins University map, and I'll try yeah. to be brief, um, right now the U.S. sits at 101,000 cases, whereas Japan... Yeah, we're, that's that's for the whole of the U.S. Whereas that's Japan only the ones. is sitting at, yeah, that's just the confirmed ones. And I won't get to I won't get into how statistics and how anomalous right. numbers work. But scientists, the actual scientists that are running these numbers, say that because these are just the confirmed numbers, factor in an order of magnitude higher. So if we're reporting one hundred and one thousand confirmed cases, that's going to be one million one hundred thousand confirmed yeah. cases. Um, Japan is currently reporting fourteen hundred for all See, of Japan. That's, that's a crazy, man. Currently, I don't know, I'm not sure where you're looking at, but again, my numbers are from twenty six. So again, that that number is going to go up and up and up and up. And that number is not accurate, man. That number is that's that's a yeah. bullshit number because everybody ain't getting tested. Japan is a very you got cities and then you got people who are cut off by like 30, 40, 50 minutes from hospitals. 
convenience stores, everything. So there are people up in the fucking Himalayas or whatever, so to speak. They're probably right. good because they're not they're not near anybody. The guys that are near cities, like we kind of got to worry because we got the the base is actually now shut down. They, you can't go leave base for anything non essential. You can't go on base for anything if you're not essential. So that's shut down. The um, they're starting to lock down now. So now Japan is going to be now where you know which man it, for me, man. Is I got I got customers, so it's kind of cool, but it, it's definitely affecting me, man. The, the turn times, the shipping. Um, you know, I got to go to Yokohama three times a month, things like that. So I'm going down there. So it, it's, it's, uh, yeah. you know, I wear my mask and everything. Um, I can't, I don't live in fear, but I'm not ignorant. I'm not going to go. I'm, I'm, luckily, my wife is cool about this. We're not going to go to like, you know, Disney, which is closed. We're not going to go. I'm not going to put myself in it. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to take the train. We're not going to find an airplane. We're not going to do anything that's going to be in, in close proximity for, and you can't get out. If you're outside, it's in the air. Um, unless you guys, unless you guys right. are sneezing at each other, like this face to face sneezing. <laughs> <Just like, laughs> so so it, the thing about it, like I'm not, I'm not yeah, Hey man, what's yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> so your like, face. I'm not going to go to Florida and go to the beach party. I'm not going to go lick toilet seats and all that stuff like that. Which yeah, is delicious uh, if you haven't then, tried then, it yet. And then report <laughs> coronavirus and want people to feel sorry for your dumb ass. Like, no, you, you deserve, <laughs> you deserve all that and more. So you got Corona and STDs and herpes and all types of shit. Jesus so, Christ! Yeah, right now, man, people. What I from what I see, I don't know. Over there, you guys got your shit going on. For what I see, outside looking in, it looks like everybody's trying to be rebellious towards staying home. Like they people want to fucking do what they're not supposed to do. So if they're saying stay home. They're like, right. no, I'm gonna go outside and live and work out, which you you never do anyway. So I see all these fucking buff fucking people. Well trying to be trying to be health people <laughs> like they're now all of a sudden everybody wants to go out everybody wants to go to the gym like before you weren't going to the gym now because they're saying you you can't go to the gym and Bally total fitness is closed and all those guys are closed now you want to go to the gym like you're you're just doing shit to spite people man like there's they're trying to keep this shit down and they just want to you know just do dumb shit and and i i don't you know that Absolutely. part of the thing again man it's just like i'm controlling my lane i put out post every few days for my customers to let them know, hey, man, everything's still on course. There has been delays. There will be delays, but I'm still operating, so I'm still open. I can't I can't afford to close, to be honest. So, you know what I mean? No, yeah, no, and that's, and that's what a lot, that's what's happening a lot here, and one of the things that, like, people, so I post a lot about it. You've seen it on my Facebook page, and I'll try not to belabor this point, because I realize you only have, yeah. like, three minutes. Um, one thing, I post a lot about it, so I get a lot of people who I am me asking me questions about it as if I'm a medical professional, and I just refer them out. I say, guys, please check the World Health Organization. Please check the CDC. Please check with actual scientists and medical researchers. All I'm doing is researching their right. research. I'm going through their research, and I'm pulling out valid information for what right. we're looking at. I All I can say is to the people that are c- concerned about it is that Yes, the United States has a higher number because we have more people. We have more people that simply cannot work from home. We have a country of 400 million people. You're going to have 100,000 cases because of those 400 million people, probably 200 million of them cannot afford to just go home and not do anything. We cannot – the United States of America cannot afford to have even 20 percent unemployment, let alone 50 percent unemployment. If we had 50% unemployment, we would fold. If we had 20% unemployment, we would fold. So you figure 80%, at least 80% of the people that have to go out and work are still yeah. doing that. You, get, you just don't, it's, there's no, you there's might, no choice, man. Exactly. Even at right now, when unemployment is at levels we've never seen before, we might be at 5% unemployment. And that's a big number. That means you still have... Out of 400 million people, you still have most of 400 million. You have nearest makes no difference. Still, 400 million people still going out and going to work and touching, you know, toilet handles and doorknobs and and picking up groceries. And people who are sick and don't realize they're sick, you know, going to the grocery store, picking up a bottle of cranberry juice, coughing and going, oh, I don't want that and putting yeah. it back. And then somebody else comes along and picks it up and then goes home to their seven kids. And then those seven kids go out and play with their friends because they don't think any of the social distancing stuff is necessary. I say all of that to say, please stay home. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) If you're in America, it's definitely, it's definitely, you know, it's, it's, you know, again, it is, is, 
it's uh people and again the people they'll, they'll, they'll if they if they've been with us from the beginning they know you make a certain amount of money and I have seen you know I, I, I do watch my other podcasts and they they say the same thing man and they don't hide it I'm like hey man I'm fortunate enough where I can do more podcasts I make money from my podcast I make money outside of this so I don't there it's not yep. affecting them and they're they're not bullshitting about that you know they're not affected uh, but again, when people like a lot of people that watch them are average, normal, regular, average Joe's worker, you know, and they're yep. like, damn, man, these guys going to sit back and relax and be so easy about it and entertain us. Um, but they're there because they busted their ass. They got to that point. So you can't be mad at their situation. You just, you can work hard to get to their, their level. It, it may, may or may not happen. But the um, I mean, me again, uh, because I control my my area. I, I, I have multiple facets of money. So, yeah, I'll, I'll lose money on a car work. But at the same time, I got people wanting cars. That's not stopping. People still want shit. People still got money. So don't think that everybody out there doesn't have money. They can't buy anything. They can't. Some people are being a little bit more conscious about it. But I can still get car sales. I can still get major part sales. I can still do things. So money can come different ways. But, you know, I prefer to have the, you know, the bulk of my money is right now still performance work. Um, so you know it is what it is, but the thing about it, I'm I'm actually booked until the end of April, so I'm I'm good uh, for now. You know what I mean, you know. Oh, but absolutely. The, so I'm, I'm that's why I'm not panicking. I'm telling my wife to. You're not? No, you're not no, gonna panic. Because I mean, dude, <laughs> it's, 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 again, for those who don't know, man, it's 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 being where being from where I'm from, and then also being through the the combat stuff. I mean, actually, and I when I say combat, I'm not talking about over in the theater. I'm talking about actually on a fucking road. Actually, get I've been close enough to dudes who were shooting at us to see their see their eyeballs. That's pretty fucking close. And right. then I also seen them get blown apart by fifty cal, which is pretty cool. You know, for being, for, for doing you know, <laughs> play, play <laughs> stupid games, you get you nice. get stupid rewards or whatever they say that that. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, he gets his fucking arm blown off, and then we continue on, and he got his 70, 72 virgins and all that stuff. So the uh, mm, the uh, beautiful, it's you know I've been in combat, I got stuff for it, and then so to see that it's gonna take a it's gonna take combat to get me to those those levels again. You know what I mean? To get you to that 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 heart racing moment of I can die right now and right. stuff like that. That's the only thing. I guess the the way to break it down is the only the the most traumatic thing in your life. It's only going to take that or something higher than that to to get to make you right. Yeah, no one's shooting at me. Your printer not yeah, printing is exactly. not a big deal. There's no IDs <laughs> on these roads here. There's nothing. Even though exactly. I stand for them and look at bridge tops because it's, it's, just, <laughs> it's something I do. It's just you're not gonna. So when the milk spills I'm out at home, my wife is like running around and and throwing a tantrum. Like, dude, clean the fucking milk up. What the fuck, dude? Like, and right. That, well, and it also plays, what you just said also plays into like what current events, you know, what's going on geopolitically right now, where, where there's this global pandemic and everyone is losing their minds. People like us are just like, gotta, okay, we, I'm right, not going to panic. Right, I'm exactly, going to prepare. Exactly. I have, if, 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 if people get stupid, I've got ways to take care right. of people. If, if my family needs sustenance, I can prepare, I can provide for my family and we're going to shelter in until this all right. blows over or until the dust settles. It's, it's never going to blow over, over but the dust will yeah. settle a vettel yeah. eventually. But I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to sit there and be like looking out of my window with my shotgun waiting for someone to do something stupid. Nope. I'm going to continue to do my day, continue to go out and have fun with my car and, you know, start it up every now and again and go drive around the block or whatever because there's nowhere to go right now. Yeah. Everything's closed. But, you know, I'm going to continue to do what I do, but – I'm always going to have that thing in the back of my head where, like, one thing I've noticed I do is now I walk around with my sidearm a lot more than I used to. Even though I'm home, I have something, oh, a knife, my, my, my sidearm. I, I'm, I, the do- I make sure the doors are always locked. I make sure that all my cameras function Bef- a lot more than I used to because people like you and me, our crazy switch takes a lot to flip. It, shit, shit has to go real sideways for you and I to go crazy. But some freaking John that, that works in accounting and is used to getting right. his way freaking 10 times a week, he's not – the second he can't watch Game yeah. of Thrones because the internet's down for more than six hours, he's going to lose right. his freaking mind. If the shit happens here in this freaking upper middle class freaking subdivision, like uh, Utah or Nevada lost power for three weeks several years ago, if that happened here, people would start losing their minds. And I'm just going to be in, I'm going to be that person that just sits in their room, reading a book, waiting for something to happen. I go, hey, um, I'll be right back. You just right. sit still because I'm not going to I'm not going to deal with people's madness 
and, and I'm not going to feed into the to the crazy uh, or to the pand hey, to hey, the thanks, pandemonium. Thanks. Speaking of, I made a note. I got to get a uh, a uh, what's that thing called a generator. So nice. Because well, you that. know, generator prices go up when shit happens. So like right now, you can get a good generator. Yep. A, di- a gas op gas <laughs> operated generator. Guys out there, get a gas operated, a diesel operated generator. Those fucking things run Iraq. They pretty much run all night. And the cat, the cat. Uh, and I, if you go to Kuwait, man, you just you just hear that hum that there's a humming noise. It's just all those generators yep. in line of power in a whole base. They're just twenty foot containers with a big engine inside of it. And uh, so yeah, generators yep. are definitely something I, I recommend out there, guys. Get because you never know when a shit's gonna go out. If you got your generators, um, you pretty much can power on. I mean, the phone company's uh, signals generally you can still. If I'm correct, uh, you know your RG11, RG45, that's a different uh, signal than electric power, correct? So that if you still yep. have uh, your, you know your ISP is still going to be up, depending on if it's coming from the satellites and stuff like that. Uh, as long as you got your yep. power, you can still maintain. So definitely recommend guys that they're getting generators. Um, you can actually use your car as it, but I don't recommend running your engine uh, as a generator because that's our. You got your mileage with spun wheels, and you got your actual hours on yep. the engine run. That's different things so you, you don't yeah load. you don't want to just have your shit running sales get hot things happen blah 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 so that's just you know don't use your car's generator if you don't have to so hey guys out there we we, we definitely do got to get out of here because i got to meet these guys on there so they don't fuck up my shop yeah man it's been good as always again i like how i like i like how Heck we yeah. had the notes and then we didn't even hit the notes until like the last end of the fucking podcast <laughs> because yeah, that's, how that's the best way it's beautiful and then, uh, yeah, it's definitely, uh, and then, like I said, I definitely look forward to being on, uh, on your, in a little window on yours. And, well, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm I guess I'm <laughs> a little window on yours, correct? Right now or bigger? I'm, right, right, right now. Yeah. But yeah, no, we're definitely just, you're the only one hosting yeah. a show right so now. <laughs> would, would, it, would it be possible to, is it possible that I can do a, um, like I'm trying to think for how I want to think it's early in the morning. So how are we talking now? Would it be possible for you to actually go uh-huh. live? While we're doing this on your end, yeah, I would. I would just have to open up OBS and add Skype right. as a feed, and then hit right. broadcast and so then I can, go so live. Then I, and I can still record mine on this end as well. So yeah, we yep. can definitely do that, man. I I, I want to kind of kind of get into a. I mean, I know you got your thing on what you do, but the cross because because if I oh yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm open to whatever, right. to whatever helps yeah. grow. I am open to yeah. suggestion, open to new ideas. I mean, if you want to, if you want to try anal yeah, live yeah, on camera, yeah, sure. we can do that. But the, <laughs> it's like, it's like, they like, dude, really? <laughs> but not, but not, yeah. I know your yeah. audience is like, these yeah, guys just like, like sure, yeah, man, whatever. It's cool, man. Just let me know. Just, you know, you like water based, water based lube, oil base. It's all good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, water based lube is definitely something that cleans yeah, up yeah. easier. Oh, you just, you just go throughout <laughs> your day, you just feel like that filth when that shame on you and. <laughs> hey, if you push hard enough, yeah. you won't need lube. The, uh, but yeah, man, I, I definitely like the cross post, and we could, if we could do that, I would like to, you know, have one with, uh, you know, Maddie there and everything, and because I'm pretty sure we could do all that. So we That'd could do awesome. that, and that would be cool. The um, of course, of course, guys up there, of course, night night magic media is your is your your site and everything. So guys up there, be yep. sure to subscribe to Dave's site. I'll put it down there and everything. Again, uh, those guys do their they do their thing. The boo- what what's the sessions you guys do? The booze too. It's uh we do Tuesdays eight thirty p.m. Eastern time to 10, 10, 10 p.m. Eastern time. It's booze okay. days, and uh, it's just because we I usually pour a glass of whiskey and we just talk about yeah. whatever booze days yeah. on Tuesdays, so, baby. I'll, I'll definitely link, <laughs> link you guys on there. Put you out there. Put the put the stuff on my page so people can see it and everything. And just, just I appreciate uh, that. I appreciate that. And 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 uh, you know it's you know right now it's prime time, man, to put out content. I knew it when it, before everybody started talking about it. I already knew, like, that's why I've done many podcasts since it's happened because now people are home. Now people are watching Netflix. So, yeah. if you if you have Netflix, correct? So, mm-hmm. de- dude, please watch Tiger King, man. Like, dude, we, I, I just want the whole next... I want the whole... Because I've already watched everybody else break it down and it's fucking hilarious. And it's like, dude, I, I, oh, when you, I'm just no. watching it. Like, some moments are hilarious, but you just, you just watch some shit that's so unbelievable. But it's real true life. And you just say, like, dude, what the? Where the fuck did they go wrong, man? Like, where the? Dude, I need dude, to check that out. Then, it's, it's, dude, you're gonna get seven. Ep- you know, I'm, I'm a physical media person. I tend to watch things on yeah. disc, so okay. I'll have to I have to make time to watch things oh, yeah, on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, dude, it's definitely worth it because we'll, it, that'll be a. They, we, we could do two episodes in that. I would, I would, if you can get Maddie to watch it, man. I, I just from her being a, a Scottish and not, and she would be like, wow, what the fuck, man. 
But it, that's it, it's, awesome, it, dude. It, it's, it's like, <laughs> dude, I watched one and the guy pointed out. He was like, "Dude, this is like white trash Game of Thrones," is what he called it. And it, and it, and oh, they, wow. they compared characters to characters in there, and they were spot on. Like Littlefinger is this guy, that's Cersei terrible. is this person. Like it, it was, it was spot on. And it's like while it see, it starts out nice when you watch it, it starts out nice and and uh, kind of like uh, Bleach, where it starts out all like you see Bleach before. It starts out all like kind of like. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like, this is lame. And then it gets dark quick. Like it gets like, it goes from nice and G rated GPG 13 to like fucking X rated like quickly. So yeah, oh, it, wow. it, it changes. It, uh, I'll, I don't want to give you away with the story, but it get, it, it's, they, they're introducing it. It's like lighthearted, cool. Play with, play with cubs. The bam, animal selling, animal trading, doing all this shit, killing them, blah, blah, blah. People, oh, people no. getting killed, people getting missing all. It's like fast and the furious, you know, really. So it is it's crazy, man. So yeah, check that out. The guys out there again, I don't make no money from Netflix, but definitely give it a look. There's a lot of shit on Netflix, but every once in a while you get the gym and that's one of those, it came out right as the lockdown happened. So perfect timing for those guys. Nice. And they probably knew that. So uh whatever, check that out. We're talking about it. So anyway, Dave again, man, thanks for thanks for stopping through on the podcast again, man. Again, guys out there, Dave is not gonna be a just, again, we got right into it because we already know each other. I'm gonna introduce him. Go back in time and look it up, David Adams and all that stuff, man. So <laughs> look it up. And again, we'll be back to you guys again. I'm gonna get to some car work here. I got a lot of stuff to do here, a lot of uh whatever to do. And um, I'll see you guys later, man. So again, Dave, thank you. And this is gonna be Donnie signing out from Masawa, Japan, and Dave from somewhere in Antarctica. And uh yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I don't I don't wanna give out location. Yeah. East Amsterdam. Yeah, like, yeah, East Amsterdam red light district. But the uh yeah, man, just everybody out there be safe, man. Be smart and, and, and uh just be smart, man. This your situation is your situation. Uh you gotta do what you gotta do for you and uh you can't worry about everybody else. Just control your zone. If everybody else out there control their fucking zones and everybody the major zone would be good, but you can't worry about this person's shit if your stuff is not correct. So, you know. Take it like that. So again, guys, take it easy. See you guys later. It's going to be Dine Sign Out. Peace. Awesome, man.